Ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon we are live for some NASCAR Cup Series live commentary action of today's co sorry Cookout 400 at the Martinsville Speedway. I almost said Coke Zero 400, the Cookout 400 for the NASCAR Cup Series. Martinsville race, short track racing for the third time in four weeks and back-to-back -back weeks on the NASCAR schedule. And for the second straight weekend, Kyle Larson starts on the front row and for the second straight week, Denny Hamlin will be trying to go for a win on a short track as he has done a couple of times already this season. A lot of other heavier favorites qualifying up towards the front after yesterday's on-track activity. And it's time for today to see who is going to show up on top. Not a lengthy pre-race show like we usually have for these NASCAR Cup Series streams. I knew I was going to be busy into the early afternoon today outside of the channel. So... Uh, we are starting here still before the start of the race, but uh, not the full 45 minutes or so beforehand like usual. But appreciate everybody tuning in and bear with me there on that. As far as this one goes, it's a pretty short one. Just 400 laps. We're used to 500 lap Martinsville races, but this will be the third consecutive year that the spring date will be 400. The last two years that was the case. It was a night race, so we're back in the day race now in the springtime at the paper clip and again still under the 400 lap banner half mile short track making up this uh nascar circuit this is the shortest nascar cup series race at least uh or the shortest track in the nascar cup series schedule outside of the bush light clash at the la coliseum but as far as the points races go uh it doesn't get any shorter than this one here today we'll go through the starting lineup for the race as kyle larson as i mentioned on the pole for the second straight weekend he has the Former Spring Martinsville winner of last season, and Bubba Wallace qualifying second, just one one thousandth of a second off of Larson's time and qualifying yesterday. Chase Elliott and Martin Tricks Jr., both former Martinsville winners, will line up in row number two. In row three will be Chase Briscoe, Joey Logano. Uh, Joey Logano, the fall Martinsville winner in 2018. Josh Berry, Denny Hamlin in row four. A multi-time winner is Hamlin at Martinsville, and Josh Berry has had great runs on short tracks this season, looking for another one here today. Ryan Blaney and Alex Bowman in row five, two more former Martinsville winners. Blaney, the most recent winner here in the fall last season, and Alex Bowman winning the fall race in 2021. Another multi-time Martinsville winner on the inside of row six. That's Kyle Busch, his best start on a short track this season, with Ross Chastain to his outside, making his career-defining moment at this track in the 2021 or 2022 fall race. Of course, I'm talking about the Hale Melon. As far as in row seven, it'll be Brad Keselowski and Austin Sindra, a couple of Fords there. Ty Gibbs, Todd Gillen in row number eight. Gibbs has had some great runs on the short tracks with JGR over the last several weeks. In fact, at Bristol, on the last half-mile short track where we're out, he led over 100 laps and won the first two stages. In row number nine, it'll be Eric Jones and William Byron. Byron winning the spring race in 2022 at Martinsville. Tyler Reddick, Christopher Bell in row number 10. Row number 11 is going to be Daniel Suarez, Ryan Priest. Suarez with one win on the year at Atlanta Motor Speedway in the second race of the season. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Zane Smith will line up in row number 12. Row 13, Carson Hosevar, the rookie, and the driver in his second season at Stuart Haas Racing, Noah Gregson. Justin Haley and Austin Dillon will be in row number 14. Row 15 will be John Hunter Nemechek and Chris Buescher starting deep in the field today. Cavs growl at Corey LaJoy in row 16. LaJoy fastest in practice yesterday, but not put up a great qualifying lap. Josh Williams in the 16 car behind him and Colley Gracie making his second points paying start in the Cup Series this year and Harrison Burton to his outside. In row number 18, it'll be Michael McDowell and Daniel Hemrick. And rounding out the 37 car field all alone in row 18, it'll be David Starr. Row 19, I should say, will be David Starr for uh, Business Motorsports Management. And that will round out the 37-car field. That is the only non-chartered entry this weekend. Again, is that 66 team fielded by David Starr. Uh, driven, I should say, by David Starr. Uh, fielded by Carl Long. Earl Arnold Jr., Bond 1771, NASCAR 2311 Cup Series Racing. Brett Whitesides, Dan Bowers, Robert Perkle, Billy Kramer, and others. Hopeful as well. Welcome into the stream. Chat has been up for a few hours now uh, prior to the start of this race, but we will keep... The poll going until the end of stage two per usual. You can vote for who you think is going to win the race today. 23 votes have already been casted. You can vote between Kyle Larson, Martin Tricks Jr., Denny Hamlin, or other. I'm taking Kyle Larson to win personally today. Not only he's the defending winner of this race, but he's had great speed in the short tracks as of late this season. Even though the Toyotas have been the teams to beat 
and have won every short track one mile in length and less, not only just the three points races, but even the Bush Light Clash. And the only other driver other than Denny Hamlin to win those races was at Phoenix when Christopher Bell got the win. Denny Hamlin has been the dominant driver in traditional short tracks this year, winning all three of them. Again, tracks under one mile in length. The Bush Light Clash he won. He won last week at Richmond on a three-quarter mile short track and, of course, the other half-mile short track on the circuit at Bristol Motor Speedway. So Hamlin's going to be tough to beat today, but I think Kyle Larson will get it done, get the win, and the 40th anniversary of Hendrick Motors. A good juju is on Kyle Larson's side, but even just going from a statistical standpoint, again, he won this race last year. He's led a lot of laps on short tracks, and outside of the Toyotas, Kyle Larson would be the only other competent pick I have to take down a Toyota driver. He had great speed last week, ended up finishing third at Richmond, and again, won a stage, led a bunch of laps, uh, so taking Kyle Larson here today. But it seems like you guys are in agreement with me, at least of those in the chat for the most part. Again, 46% of the votes saying Kyle Larson will win, but that could change between now and the end of stage two. We'll see how this race will unfold in the early going. Uh, Lincoln Kemp Hollingsworth, Mark Witkowski, Cody Ledger, also welcome into the stream. Missed the fantasy picks. I did not uh, have enough time for this stream today to have the full predictions episode like I did. So I gave you my uh, race winner. I do think Denny Hamlin is another solid pick uh, for your teams here today. And I'm not going to lie. I don't even think I remembered to set my lineup. I did not give myself enough time this morning to do so. I got to see if it's locked or not. I could be upset if it is. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it's locked, unfortunately. So I have the same guys as last week. Honestly, my team doesn't look that bad. I would take Chris Buescher out of there if I had a chance and probably would have plugged in like a Ryan Blaney or something. But other than that, though, I would say that I like my team otherwise. Buescher doesn't contend well. I'll just put Hamlin in my starting lineup. He's in my garage right now. So whoopsies. <laughs> Didn't have enough time for that. Karina Corona, thanks for tuning in. She thinks Kyle Larson's going to get the win as well. The Clint Boyer and Kevin Harvick are dialing up Chase Briscoe for an interview. They're just actually getting done talking to him right now. They're going through the rest of their starting lineup. For more late-breaking news prior to the drop of the green flag of this race today, I'll let you listen in. You can watch the race on Fox Sports 1 today. This is the first points-paying cup race that is on FS1 uh, this season. So again, Fox Sports 1, not your local Fox affiliate today. If uh, you were wondering where you can watch the race. Game Hardy said, we were really good yesterday in practice. We feel like we have something that can compete with Kyle Larson. Of course, Denny Hamlin looking to get his third short track win of the season. About row five. One here last fall, right down the road. He's from High Point, North Carolina's Ryan Blaney. The outside of him, Alex Bowman, he's one of those four 40th anniversary Hendrick cars, 2021 Martinsville winner. Row six, Kyle Busch, a two-time winner here. And Ross Chastain, who's been top five in half of the last four Martinsville races. As you have a look at the rest of our starting grid, let's see what's top of mind at Martinsville for our crew chief, Larry McReynolds. You know, Mike, once this driver leaves pit road for 400 laps, there's not a lot he can do inside that race car except maybe adjust the way he's driving the race car. But there is one adjustment that he can make, and I can almost promise you he'll be using it a lot. Let's go to our Toyota Camry cutaway car, and let's talk about what we call brake bias. You're going to lift the body off the car here, and you're going to see this red knob on the dash where he can adjust front and rear brake bias. The, the car actually has two complete different brake systems, one for the front when it controls the rear. Now, if the car is loose under braking, he can crank a little front brake into it. If it's maybe tight, not turning under braking, he can put some rear brake. That knob is red right now, guys, but more than likely, they'll be adjusting on it. The paint will be completely gone. <laughs> Well, that's a fact. We saw a lot of those uh, left front tires sliding yesterday. A lot of cars loose in the corner. So that brake bias is going to get a workout today. Beautiful day at Martinsville. Temperature fighting its way up into the mid-60s here. But full sunshine and a light breeze. And under the sun, the asphalt, 94 degrees. Here's your uh, Credit One Bank race analysis for today. Three stages, of course. 80, 100, 120 laps will be the distance. 
All right, pace cars in. Larson leads the field into the restart zone, and we are underway at Martinsville Speedway. Great launch by Larson, waiting to the end of the box to take off. And uh, almost cleared. Bubba Wallace getting into the first turn. Wallace is going to stay with him for a little bit in the center of the corner before Larson is finally clear for sure off the exit of turn two. And as they roll through three and four, the top three cars are already single file, still side by side for fourth between Chase Briscoe and Martin Trex Jr. Trex went a little wide in the center of the corner, allowed for Briscoe to clear for that fourth place position. Trex drops in line on the bottom lane behind him. Logano still stuck on the outside of the 19 and the four who are working their way trying to get into the top five in the early going. Kyle Larson, the leader of the first lap of the race, now the leader at the end of lap two as well. And again, 80 laps in stage one, 100 laps in stage two, 220 laps in the final stage. You do not have to pit for fuel purposes at all in stage one. You would pit during the stage break, and then you'll be able to make it to the end of stage two without having to pit as well. So uh, not going to see many green flag pit stops, if any at all today, depending on how the cautions may unfold if we get any cautions for incident in stage three. Of course, with this lap, uh, this race, excuse me, being 100 laps in length shorter than what we would usually see at Martinsville in the spring race, uh, this is the same race length that we have seen the last couple of seasons as well. Larson out to a half a second lead already over Bubba Wallace on lap four. Again, Chase Elliott is in third place. Chase Briscoe fourth, and Martin Tricks Jr. rounds out the top five through the first handful of laps. A raw feed working for the second consecutive cup race, at least, right out of the gate this weekend. So uh, great to see that. No issues there. Still some jockeying for position. Austin Sindrick with a late dive into turn three to get underneath the 38 car of Todd Gillen. They battle for 14th, but everybody pretty much single file uh, just in front of them. Ty Gibbs is also underneath the 24 of William Byron, who is behind the side-by-side -side battle between the two and the 38 of Sindrick and Gillen, so they're boxed in just a little bit as well. Byron slipped up in his qualifying lap yesterday, did not qualify nearly as well as his teammates of Larson and Elliott, and uh, even Alex Bowman just barely missed the top 10, in the, or actually barely snuck it. The last one with these next-gen cars, uh, everybody's just so equal now, and because of the shifting in the middle of the corners and not as much horsepower compared to what we had seen with the Gen 6 car in the shorter racetracks, uh, very difficult to try to get a pass made, and as you see right now, that's why you're uh, maybe seeing some drivers be extra aggressive trying to throw blocks at the end of the straightaway to remain in front of another car. Single file for about the top 20 in the field now. Once Byron and Gibbs got situated as well, Cindric and Gillowin, 
Uh, some other cars are still side by side for position much deeper in the field. There's a couple battles going on there, but at the front, fairly tame for right now. Still a little bit of a ways before lap traffic is going to become any sort of a factor for our race leader, Kyle Larson. We'll see if that gap tends to close. As we know, again, it's not only difficult to pass cars here, it's difficult to also pass lap cars. So we could see the battles for position become much tighter if we get much longer green flag runs. A couple of the Spire cars are side by side. As I mentioned, back half of the field, still some battles going on. Uh, looks like the two rookies of Zane Smith and Carson Hosevar are going at it right now. Right in line behind Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Joey Logano has closed the gap on Martin Tricks Jr. Looking to maybe take him over for fifth place. Gets to his bumper, hits him in the middle of turns three and four. But all he did was push him forward more off the exit of the corner. Got to him a little too late there. Seems like Logano rolling the center of the corner a lot better than the 19. And the 19 has to wait a bit more to get back into the gas, into full throttle. We'll see if he can increase his speed on the longer run, and maybe he's just kind of saving for right now. We've seen Truex be really good on the long run in the first two short track races at Richmond and Bristol. Finished second at Bristol, ended up finishing top five at Richmond. Uh, finished fourth last week, led the most laps in that race, won a stage as well, and if it wasn't for a late race caution, probably would have went on to win. So expect Truex to be a contender here today, and if we see long green flag runs, which I'm expecting there to be, just like we saw at Richmond last week, I think Trix might be one of the ones to beat, along with the 5 of Larson, the 11 of Hamlin. Hamlin didn't qualify quite as well as those two. He still qualified inside the top 10. He's currently running in the ninth place position, but if he can get the track position based off of pit road and restarts today, I think Hamlin could also be a contender, much like he has been. Again, he's won the only other traditional short tracks on the schedule, points races and non-points races. Hamlin and Larson were both the odds-on favorite for the race today as well. No surprise there. I think Hamlin was the overall favorite, but I do like Larson just a bit more. I think that extra track position, the long run speed was key as well for Larson in practice. Hamlin had the second fastest long run speed in the 20, 25, 30 lap averages and beyond. Kyle Larson was first, uh, just a little bit ahead of him. And because, again, he out-qualified Hamlin, that's why it ultimately ended up going up with Larson, most recent winner at this racetrack. But, again, the Toyotas, they're undefeated on short tracks this season. Between the Clash and then the three one-mile racetracks and less in length in the uh, points paying standing, so they're four for four right now. Quite a few of them quali qualifying in the top ten. Wallace qualifying second, Truex qualified top five. Denny Hamlin uh, started, I believe, in the eighth-place position, back the ninth again off the start. Byron getting by Austin Sindrick just outside the top 10. A couple positions gained for the 24 car in the early going. And now lap traffic is becoming into effect on lap 18 as Larson will lap the 66 car of David Starr. Continues on about a six-tenth of a second gap over Bubba Wallace on lap 19. Wallace has an even bigger gap between himself and Chase Elliott in second. About a second and a half to nearly two-second difference between the 23 and the 9 cars on track. And over the course of about a 40 to 50 lap run in practice yesterday with similar track temps, the air or the track temp itself was 92 degrees during practice yesterday, 94 today. Air temp just a couple degrees warmer as well. I think it was 64, uh, uh, 64 now, 60 degrees yesterday. So fairly similar track temperatures, uh, relatively cool. But for the most part, we're not going to see a lot of fall off. You get to 40 to 50 laps in, there was anywhere between three tenths to six tenths of a second of a difference in tire fall off. And as of right now, in the first 20 laps, we've seen about three tenths. So it might be more towards that six to eight tenths of a second of fall off, I think, over the course of an entire stint. Uh, this first stage, again, 80 laps. So we'll kind of get a test uh, at that 80 lap mark of exactly where the lap times will be at the end of that run and where they were at the beginning. Larson's fastest lap was on lap two of a 20.259. Bubba Walls' fastest lap was on lap five, maybe a little bit after he got further behind Larson, maybe out of the dirty air a bit, as he is now a 20.232, slightly faster than Larson's fastest time. But that last lap on the racetrack, Larson was about a tenth quicker than the 23 of Wallace behind him. These two were battling for a long time uh, at Richmond last week. Uh, on one of the restarts, I remember that early in the race after Larson won stage one, I think Wallace was second. They were battling side by side for the league quite a bit. And then even at the end of the race, they were battling inside the top five for positions. So kind of fitting that they both qualify in the front row 
here today and uh, might have to battle for position right out of the gates and kind of pick up where they left off from a week ago. Full screen commercial break for the first time on FS1. We'll keep our live commentary coverage rolling without any breaks for the current moment. Kyle Larson, again, is your race leader by eight tenths of a second over Bubba Wallace in second. Chase Elliott third, 2.4 seconds off the lead. 3.3 seconds back is Chase Briscoe in fourth. Martin Truex Jr., 5.2 seconds back in fifth. Joey Logano, six seconds off the lead in sixth. Josh Berry still in the top ten in seventh place. Top ten for the first time today at 7.8 seconds off the lead after qualifying 11th. He has gained one spot from the beginning of the race. The only driver to run their fastest lap of the race as of the last couple laps was William Byron in 13th. He put his fastest lap together at lap 22. Currently, we're at lap 25, so it was just a few laps ago uh, as he is still obviously in heavy traffic after qualifying in the middle of the pack. As the colleague Chevys of Daniel Hemrick and Josh Williams have both gone a lap down as well. Austin Dillon, Michael McDowell, Harrison Burton, Justin Haley at the tail end of the lead lap currently. And still a six-tenth of a second difference between Larson and Bubba. Uh, during the midst of lap traffic, it does look like Wallace has gained a couple tenths on Larson. We will see if he can continue to chop away at that as the run gets longer and longer and longer. But it, again, it is worth noting, it is worth noting, excuse me, that the 20, 25, 30 lap averages and beyond, Larson was the fastest yesterday in practice with a similar track temp, a similar air temp, forecast really almost identical to what it was yesterday. During the daytime hours, of course, that the cup cars were on the racetrack, maybe not at night like the Xfinity and the truck races were this weekend. Larson on the outside groove trying to work his way around Michael McDowell and Justin Haley. Groove hasn't really come into play yet, but Larson doing well of it. Just goes to show the speed in his race car compared to a lot of the others. And now Wallace is kind of trapped in the bottom groove with one car to his outside and now side-by-side -side lap traffic in front of him. So this could be a chance for Larson to pull away a bit more. Chase Elliott, Chase Briscoe, who haven't quite gotten to that lap traffic yet, were actually quicker than Larson the last lap. But then Larson, this most recent lap that we just now concluded was the fastest on the racetrack again, at least of those in the top five, all dealing with the traffic. And this is another spot where, of course, we're going to see the lap times dip for a little bit until Larson gets into somewhat more open and clean room and clean racetrack to race on. As he now looks to the inside of Harrison Burton, Ooh, big lockup by Justin Haley on the inside lane in front of the 14 car of Chase Briscoe. Did a good job keeping it off of Chase Elliott, who was on the outside of the 51. Three wide to the inside goes Briscoe to get by Haley, who continues to fall backwards as there was another lap car that was on the outside of both of them. That would have been the 31 of Daniel Hemrick at that moment. Elliott now to the inside of Josh Williams. As he continues doing very well through lap traffic, Briscoe in his own merit doing pretty well as also to try to stay with the nine of Elliott in front of him. Uh, the intervals really between the top 10 haven't changed a whole lot over the last 10 to 15 laps. Other than the top two now, uh, it looks like Larson definitely getting through the lap traffic better than Bubba Wallace. And the gap between first and second all of a sudden is now a second and a half. It's just about 10 laps ago when it went through the top 10 of the running order, it was only about eight tenths of a second. Then it was cut down to six tenths when Larson first hit the lap traffic and another second now has opened up the gap. Does this weekend look at somebody with similar equipment to him like William Byron. He's only gained four positions from the start of the race in 35 laps. It's just not a quick enough pace to put yourself behind even at the end of stage one with any sort of a pit penalty and try to come back from it. Unless we get a ton of cautions, which I just don't see that happening. Almost halfway through stage one already, it is setting up for a fairly quick race pace. And speaking of William Byron a little bit ago, he's working on his teammate Alex Bowman for 30, on lap 38 for the 11th place position. Got to get into the top 10 to score stage points at the end of each stage. One point per position at the end of stage one and stage two only for the top 10. 10 points for first, 9 for second, all the way back to 1 point for 10th. And a playoff point for the stage win which carries through every round of the playoffs as that driver advances once that begins later this season. 
We'll take a look at the point standings coming into this weekend's event at Martinsville Speedway. While the race is still going on, of course. Uh, Martin Truex Jr., despite no wins on the season, is actually the current points leader. He scored a lot of stage points and currently is 14 points ahead of Kyle Larson. And 15 playoff points are awarded to the regular season champion. Uh, only two years since 2014 when the playoffs of 16 drivers was implemented where we've had the knockout round stages that the regular season champion has missed the final four. One of those years, oddly enough, was last season with Martin Truex Jr., but we will see uh, if that regular season champion can get back into the championship four more often than not. Again, they do. So that is a big 15 points to try to get. And right now, Truex is 14 points ahead of Larson. Again, we're only in race seven. After today, we will still have 18 races left in the regular season. But Larson's on the hard charge. He gained three spots in points after last week. Again, he won a stage at Richmond. He's actually won the most stages of any driver this season uh, and had a solid finish as well. Actually finished one spot ahead of Truex in the running order. Denny Hamlin with his win. Last week, didn't get as many stage points, only had three of them total, but got the race win, so still solid points today because of that alone. Uh, only three top ten finishes for Hamlin in the first seven races, but two top fives, and those only two top fives were his two wins at Bristol and Richmond. Uh, so Hamlin's been very good on the shorter racetracks where Toyota as a whole has been good, but all the intermediates, that 11 team seems to be struggling still. Uh, but he is third overall in the standings, 18 out of first. Ty Gibbs, another Joe Gibbs Toyota. Again, the Toyota is very dominant this season. Fourth in the standings, and that was even after losing two spots a week ago. Still within one race worth of points. Again, the points are going to be tight this early in the year. Uh, from first through about 10, 34 points out is Gibbs. Ryan Blaney's fifth overall in the standings. Christopher Bell sixth. William Byron seventh. Chase Elliott eighth. Ross Chastain ninth. Tyler Reddick is tenth. Uh, the drivers who are locked into the playoffs with at least one win this season. Uh, Denny Hamlin, William Byron tied with two wins on the year. And then there are four drivers with one win, which would include Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, uh, Daniel Suarez. And uh, I apologize that there was only three drivers with one win, two with two wins. So five different winners so far this season. But those are the five locked into the playoffs. So still 11 spots open. We scroll down the screen a little bit more to where the bubble is. And Brad Kisilowski is actually in the final playoff spot as we come into this race today. He's only seven points ahead of John Hunter Nemechek, 13 points ahead of Chase Briscoe, and he is 15, uh, 14 points ahead of his former teammate Joey Logano. Austin Sindrick is 30 points back in 20th. Uh, Michael McDowell also in the picture there. He is 26 points out of 16th. Uh, as far as uh, 36 points out of 16th, other drivers who are just on the out uh, inside looking out potentially. Bubba Wallace is only sitting 12 points to the good coming into this one. Got to do my math right. Nine points. <laughs> Didn't see he was at 105. Uh, that's how prepared I am for this one today. Uh, Bubba Wallace, nine points to the good. Kyle Busch comes in 11 points to the good. Chris Busher a little bit better than that as he sits 19 points to the good. So that's kind of an update on where we're at. Uh, other statistical categories with drivers leading, like the laps led category. Kyle Larson's led the most laps this year, 368 laps led in the first seven races. Truck's not far behind, 352 laps led, and you can definitely the standings. The top four in the point standings are all in the top four in laps led. Denny Hamlin with 292 and third, and even Ty Gibbs has led 195 laps this season in just the second season in the Cup Series. Uh, stage wins, I mentioned Larson has three. That's the most this year. The only other ones with more than one would be Ty Gibbs with two, both at Bristol, and Christopher Bell has two of them as well. A uh, few drivers have one. And as far as the top tens on the season, we have several drivers tied at five top tens on the year. Christopher Bell has five. Ty Gibbs has five. And Martin Truex Jr. has five. All the JGR Toyotas, excluding Hamlin, tied for the most top tens. Uh, so five through seven races. And as far as top fives go, we've got quite a few drivers with two and three. Uh, drivers with three top fives on the year, which is tied for the most, would include Alex Bowman, who's 11th in points, Christopher Bell, sixth, Ryan Blady, fifth, Ty Gibbs, fourth, Kyle Larson in second. Uh, two top fives on the year, again, for Truex, for Hamlin with the two wins. The two wins for Byron are his only two top fives, which came at Coda and Daytona 500. 
And it looks like Tyler Reddick and Bubba Wallace have two top fives as well as Brad Keselowski with a couple top fives over the short track races uh, here early in the season as well. So that is an updated look as to how the NASCAR Cup Series season has gone so far. Still working our way through stage one of this race. Kyle Larson has still led every lap. And he is still the fan vote for who you think is going to win this race today. So once again, you have until the end of stage two to vote for who you think is going to win. Uh, Kyle Larson is the favorite. Well, he was the overall favorite. He's the favorite of the three still. But it looks like you guys have swayed that poll quite a bit. Larson had 48% of the votes before the race is started. Now it's down to 32%. Uh, other at 37%. Somebody other than Larson, Truex, or Hamlin to win. Uh, quite surprised that that swayed quite a bit. But that's why we keep it open to the end of stage two. We'll give you guys a chance to vote. Maybe change your votes. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. has 18%, Denny Hamlin at 13 so it's kind of an update on that side of things. 47 likes on the stream so far. Be sure to uh, hit that like button if you guys haven't done so yet. We have already broken a couple of uh, stream records this weekend for most like NASCAR Cup Series practice and qualifying stream on the year. That happened yesterday, and we hit our likes goal as well for that stream, clearly, obviously, with breaking the ultimate record. Uh, more than doubled what the uh, goal was going into the stream. Ended up with 104, and we did have about that many likes in the truck race last night, or sorry, the uh, Xfinity race last night, which our goal was 100 as well. Uh, Cerebral Assassin, thanks for the $5 super chat as well. Been a while since I joined your stream. Good to see. You. Well, thank you uh, so much for dropping the $5 super chat. Believe me when I say it does go a long way in helping support the channel, and I do uh, appreciate that very much. Uh, and appreciate each and every one of you guys tuning in here every NASCAR race weekend for these streams as well. So I mentioned Larson's led every lap of this race so far. We're down to just 21 laps to go in Stage 1. Uh, looks like currently we are at lap 60 of 400 total. Denny Hamlin, William Byron, the drivers on the move over the course of this long run, especially Byron going from 16th place to 8th now in the first 60 laps on a track that's difficult to pass so again. Showing that he does have similar speed to Elliott and Larson at the front of the field, just didn't qualify particularly well. Messed up a couple times on his two laps in the first round of qualifying that left him outside of the top 10 for the start of the race. Uh, Denny Hamlin's gained a couple spots over the recent laps to go from ninth to 7th during that most recent commercial break as well. So that is where we stand. And again, your top 10 late in the stage. Kyle Larson in the race lead. Bubba Wallace is 2nd. Chase Elliott 3rd. Chase Briscoe 4th. Martin Truex Jr. 5th. Joey Logano 6th. Denny Hamlin 7th. William Byron 8th. Josh Berry, ninth. Kyle Busch rounds out the top 10. Outside of our pit stall is 1,500 Hendrick Motorsports employees and families and all the people that you know are here to cheer us on. Whoever's been in pit stall one the last four or five races here has sped. Let the stall and the pit crew do the work. Right now, if a caution comes out at lap 40, I don't know if we're going to stay. I don't know if we're taking rights. I don't know if we're taking four. I really don't know. We're just going to have to observe you know, the track, the rubber content. Here we go, team. Ah! Let's have a great day. I love that advice, Clint. Enjoy that moment. When you've got, I always enjoyed when there was more people watching, more pressure on you. Um, just take that moment, and because when you succeed in those moments, it is so gratifying. And I don't even know how to explain it to people. Well, the only moment that I heard Cliff Daniels say that I don't believe is he doesn't know. That man is sharp, and he always has a plan. Well, he sounded like somebody told him that Pitstall 1 has not won a race in Martinsville in 10 years. Wow. Yeah. If he has anything to do with it, that's going to change. Well, I, I really, really like the way that this race has started. It couldn't have started better for, uh, for Kyle Larson. And you well, see, he started on the pole. Okay. Yeah, and, and he's he's got the, the rich get richer, right? He's got the first <laughs> pit stall. He's got the best track position. He's got everything. But I've seen a lot of cars go backwards as, as, as we start this race, and he's not one of them. He's put 11 cars one lap down already in the first 67 laps of this race. Well, he's going to have to deal with this 11 car at some point. And the 24. 
Six places. Yeah, both of those cars are making their way through the field. Coming up on David Starr. Three laps down to the 66. Justin Haley is going to take down in the 51. Well, and this is really going to bite Denny Hamlin right here because he's going to get stuck behind David Starr unless he doesn't move up. But you see William Byron not give him any space to try to pick, use him as a pick. Uh, this is going to get tight. Oh. Oh, Denny has to move him up out of the way. Byron struggled here last fall. He only ran five laps in a top ten position. Finished 13. How many times you've been here done that? Come here, run right up in the front, almost win the race, come back the next time, felt like all the tires were flying. Yeah, what did you guys do to this thing? Yeah. It's literally the same car with the same setup, Glenn. I don't know what to tell you. Ten to go in stage one this time by Jamie. Amazing how good Kyle Larson has been at this track the last few times. Yet he told me before he got in the car, this place just is opposite of what he grew up doing. He said you have to slow down to go fast here, and that's not what you do in dirt racing. In the meantime, he's led every lap so far, and they told him, do whatever is comfortable. Guys around you, behind you, are moving around, so find your comfort zone. All right now, right side of his own, just in front of this group. Traffic is a constant here it is a constant and that's why we've been stressing so much between the traffic and the rubber on the racetrack it is so important to have a versatile car and be able to do something different in the corner than everybody else well they've lapped all the way up to 26th place already 25th pretty amazing man they're picking them up putting them down fast here. yeah one of those cars that they lapped is chris busher and i'm I'm really surprised that Clint Lee was talking um, before the show. Just the six and the seventeen just have not run like they like they did last year. And I don't know what they're missing this year compared to that at some of these racetracks where we really expect them to run strong. But that's a that's a huge surprise as we're on board with the built submarines uh, on board camera. Chris Joey, Busher, Joey Logano, and Denny Hamlin have been very patient with Austin Dillon. And I thought patience was about to run out there, but Logano just can't seem to get to the bumper of the three, and he can't seem to get past Casgrola. Well, he's running out of patience behind him, too. I saw Diddy Hamill lay the bumper to Joey Logano twice now, and it's because of the pressure behind him. William Byron, Josh Berry, right on his heels. Well, when those cars are side by sides, it, it, it makes it even worse because the air in front of them just... Uh, is not as good when those cars are side by side like that. Joey Logano's backing up and stacking full lane. Man, I love the move I saw by Josh Berry in that four car. Went way outside, entered way high, crossed back over, got a low and straight run up off the corner off the two. Moving around, doing what they're not. Well, this can only last another three laps. We'll be at the end of stage one. Josh Berry, a lot of success here at Martinsville. Xfinity car, uh, late model stunt cars. So much success around here in the southeast in the late models. This rubber is giving these guys fits. They're just slipping and sliding everywhere. Well, you got to make some good adjustments because, as you've seen in this stage, it goes by really quick, and you got to you got to get them right because you might not get many chances to work. You know, one of the quickest cars the last eight or ten laps is Bubba Wallace in that 23. And Kevin, you and Clint were talking about this yesterday. What I like, what I'm seeing with this 23 car, he uses the brake, but he gets off. He lets the car roll through the middle without using a lot of brake. He's rolling right to the leader of Kyle Larson, too. Oh, I told you the patience is running out back there. That, that isn't the first time. Final lap of stage number one. Bubba Wallace is closed to the back bumper. Akaya Larson might have a chance to steal the stage as Larson got stuck behind the 71 of Zane Smith for several laps. Larson again to the outside trying to get the straight line off. Wallace underneath him. Drag race off turn four and Larson will win the stage. Bubba Wallace will end up in second. Almost looked like Bubba kind of let him go there. Uh, maybe for what happened last week or whatever, but it did look like Bubba came up off of turn four, lifted, let the five of Larson go by, and Larson is going to win stage number one. Wallace second, Chase Elliott third, Chase Briscoe fourth, Martin Truex Jr. fifth, Joey Logano sixth, Denny Hamlin seventh, William Byron eighth, Josh Berry ninth, and Kyle Busch rounds out the top ten. Again, that is your stage one results here today at Martinsville. Uh, no cautions through stage one in the first 80 laps, and the free pass will go to Chris Busher in 26th. 
And uh, those drivers that are 27th on back are going to get trapped one or two laps down, depending on how many laps down they were. I think David Starr was uh, four laps down there at the end of the stage. So they're not going to be able to take the wave around. Everybody's going to have to come down and pit for tires for the first time. We did see a little over a second of fall off over the course of that first stage, anywhere between 1 to 1.2 seconds uh, from the fastest laps in the early going to the most recent laps we had right at the end of the stage. And in the open, it might not be quite that bad. I think some of the lap traffic was probably costing the leaders some of that lap time, but uh, probably not all of it, if I had to guess. S. Nesbitt, John Barber, Rob Lapopel, thanks for tuning in as well. I think that 40th anniversary scheme uh, for Hendrick Motorsports this weekend, riding with Kyle Larson, definitely looking like a good luck charm early on. Patrick Shadley, thanks for tuning in here as well. Uh, Tammy Lynch, iRacing413. And others. Thank you for watching here this afternoon. We'll take our first ad break. You're listening live on KRC to the Cookout 400 at Martinsville. And we'll have our first pit stops of the race on the other side. 102 votes have now been casted. 36% of you still say somebody other than Larson, Truex, or Hamlin will win. Larson very close to the top of that poll at 34%. 17% of you say Truex will win, and 13% say Denny Hamlin. Not much movement. No, not a lot. There were only really two drivers that were slowly working through the field there towards the end of the stage that looked like they might have something for Larson if they could gain more track position, uh, being Denny Hamlin and William Byron in my eyes. And I'd say more Byron than Hamlin because Byron went from 16th to 8th. Hamlin really only gained two positions and the later going to that stage, struggled to get by Logano. And then uh, Bubba Wallace did close in quite a bit on Larson the last lap or so of the stage. He was about two seconds back, close to the back bumper of Kyle in the last lap. But uh, I think most of that was that huge line of lap traffic in front of Larson. Larson not maybe necessarily using everything he could to get around them, just trying to manage that gap he had over Wallace, and he managed it perfect. Definitely maybe a little closer to what he would have liked it to have been, but... Still a good job, nonetheless. Two of the fastest stops of the year. So let's say hello to Chase Briscoe's team. Shane Papala, front tire changer. I've been changing tires for 16 years. The 2017 Daytona 500 champion, back-to-back -back Brickyard champ in 19 and 20. 2023 Xfinity champion, and I wouldn't be here without my loving support of my wife and son, Amy and Lucas. Thank you. I'm Dakota Ratcliffe. I'm the rear tire changer. This is my sixth season in the sport, and I'm your 2023 Xfinity Series champion. John Brunel, tire carrier, 2015 Most Valuable Pit Crew, 2017 Daytona 500 winner, father of three, and the sexiest man on pit road with bald head. Dylan Moser, nickname is Moose, Jackman, played football at Wingate University. And I made Sports Center top 10. Corey Coppolo, Fueler, fifth year in the sport, winner in Phoenix in 2022, former Davis and Defense alignment. <laughs> he nailed it. Yes, he did. <laughs> well done. Richard Boswell, the second, is the crew chief for Chase Briscoe from Friendship, Maryland. Third season as Cup crew chief and second with Briscoe. Oh. Local legend, Dickie Boswell's boy. Yeah. Miss that man. Here we go. Oh, it roads open. Long way around for the leaders. Here's Regan. We just met Chase Briscoe's team. They get their first chance to go to work today right now. Right now, the 14 car sliding the right rear the entire run. Couldn't get the power down. The 19 of Martin Truex Jr., his car is just extremely tight through the rubber. It's making it worse as the rubber goes down on the racetrack. I'll have to snap loose off, Jamie. For Bubba Wallace, a really good first game. She's been pretty good. No changes here. The five. He's led every single lap so far for Kyle Larson. He says, my car is good. I just got stuck behind those guys. They held me up. Just air pressure adjustment for Larson. Ricky Stenhouse got turned getting into his pit stall. And because the left rear wheel is outside the stall, he cannot do the stop. Has to back up, turn it around. Not once, but twice. And oh, no. Oh. Wedge reach. He'll be coming back down, Todd Gilliland. Let's dial up, Bubba. Hey, Bubba Wallace, it's Boy and the Boys up in the booth. You got me? What up, Dom? And you are. 
Oh, five car, that leader was getting really big in that windshield at the end of that run. About the same as last week, Scott Bale. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, the car's really good, so just appreciate everybody. On the 23 team, we've been working really hard just to get our rhythm back, get our mojo back from the beginning of the season. So it's a long way to go, but it's nice to be fast. So do what we can do here. All right, man, keep it up. Thanks for the time. Second top five in a stage here for Bubba Wallace. Now you'll see Ricky Stenhouse, the orange car, Ooh. come in. And, boy, he got turned around. He was also too fast entering. Spun coming into his box and too fast entering pit road. A double whammy for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. through the first pit stop of the day. Joey Logano won the race off pit road. I do believe he might have taken right sides only. Uh, if not, if it was a four-tire stop, congrats to them for being able to do that. Uh, so quickly, they gained five positions on pit road. Uh, Todd Gillen gained 10 positions on pit road. I believe there was a chance that he went two tires only, but the wedge adjuster got stuck uh, on the back of the race car in the like actual wedge adjuster uh, spot. So I should say the tool got stuck in the actual wedge adjuster itself. So uh, as a result of that, he's going to have to come back down onto pit road and get that taken out because that is uh, technically going to be equipment out of the box. I don't think NASCAR will want him driving around at full speed with that in there. could cause a debris caution. So, unfortunately for Gillen, he's going to lose all of his track position. He was just outside the top 10 at the end of Stage 1, uh, so definitely a tough break for him. He's going to be at the very back of the field here, and again, we'll have 26 cars on the lead lap at the end of the stage. Several drivers going to be racing for that first car to be one lap down. They're going to have to hope that this next stage doesn't go caution free or they'll be in danger of going two laps down with it being 20 laps longer in length than stage one. Uh, they will not have to pit for fuel at all in this stage either. Pretty straightforward first stage. Kyle Larson led every lap. Only laps he hasn't led is now with Logano out in front after winning the race off of pit road. We'll see if Larson can get back to the race lead. quickly or not he did nail that initial start very well and wasn't even side by side for more than half a lap with Wallace initially Ethan Chua also welcome into the stream Chris Richardson welcome Again, the race is on Fox Sports 1 if you're wondering where you can watch it live. 61 likes on the stream thus far. Again, our goal is to get to 150. So be sure to hit that. Uh, hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button as well if you guys have not done so yet. We came into the stream today only 27 subscribers shy of 5,000. So be sure to hit that subscribe button so we can get there hopefully before the end of this stream. Try to get to that goal. 1.3 second lead for Logano over Larson. Under caution, I guess the interval doesn't matter much. I'm just used to saying that when they're under green flag all the time. But yeah, Joey Logano leading the way. See if he fires off well in this restart. I would assume he took two tires because it shows his pit stop time is 4.6 seconds. It might have been no tires. Is either two or none for Logano. Pick, remember, almost got taken out there by Blaney. Trying to get around the car as Blaney was getting out of the pit box. Slow stop for the 12th team anyway, though. I think they were just outside the top 10 around 12th, 13th. Now they're back at 24th. Well, he's in a rush to get out of there for sure after a slow stop. Yeah, and Chase Briscoe, he's going to be salty with his crew too because of uh, the loss in positions. And it's so important to be able to keep the track position here if you want to have a chance to win this race. Salty, huh? His teammate, uh, Josh Berry, lost a couple spots as well. I think he came in ninth. Well, he, yeah, he's 11th now. Chris Buescher got the free pass. He was the first car one lap down. So on the choose, Larson to the outside, Logano inside. They're in row number one. Uh, Chase Elliott, and it was off Chase's front bumper that Ricky Stenhouse spun, trying to get into his pit. 
Chase on the outside of Bubba Wallace for row two for the restart. What do you think about these two tires? Well, we're about to find out. I never, I never like two tires. No, ever. But track position is sometimes king, so we're going to find out which one's better. I think Logano, if he can get out ahead of Larson off the start, he'll be able to hold on for 20 to 30 laps at the most. But once we get longer into the run than that, I don't think it's going to happen. Green flag in the air. Larson was caught napping on the restart. Logano's easily going to be clear. Walsh might have a shot at second on Larson off turn two. It's going to be close. Not going to quite be able to clear him there. But Logano easily out in front. Now Wallace is going to be clear. Larson's really trying to get to the bottom behind the 23. But Hamlin is already underneath Larson. Wallace to second. Drag race for third headed to turn one. And William Byron also side by side with his Hendrick teammate Chase Elliott for fifth place just behind the 11 in the five. Hamlin a bit loose getting up off of turn two as he gets the power down. Larson close to clearing into turns three and four. See if he can get a better straight drive off in turn four as he pinches Hamlin down on the bottom. Nope, Hamlin's still going to be able to stay there. And as they continue to run side by side, the top two are pulling away in front of him. And the quicker walls can get around Logano on the older left side tires. I think there's a good chance a 23 car could pull away here in the early going of stage two. Elliott was able to hop down to the bottom lane in front of William Byron. Surprised that Elliott won that battle considering how strong the 24 car looked, at least on the long run, towards the end of the first stage. Denny Hamlin. Side by side, still with Larson for about nearly four laps after the restart. Hamlin finally clear. Larson just squeezes his way in line in front of his teammate Elliott as Larson drops from the outside of the front row to fourth place on the restart. Truex, who was also in the outside lane of the restart around, I believe, row three, fell back to ninth, losing three positions. Finally gets to the bottom behind Bowman and in front of Bush. Top 10 following the restart. Joey Logano still out in front. Bubba Wallace second. Denny Hamlin third. Kyle Larson fourth. Chase Elliott fifth. William Byron sixth. Chase Briscoe seventh. Alex Bowman eighth. Martin Truex Jr. ninth. And Kyle Busch is tenth. The only caution of the day was the lap 80 stage break. Almost a quarter of the way home already in the first 40 minutes of this Cup Series race in Martinsville to cook out 400. And the average race speed to this point, 75.88 miles per hour. Only two leaders. Larson led every lap from the pole in stage one. Got the stage one win. Logano won the race off pit road, taking two tires. As a result of that, on the outside lane, Larson spun his tires on the restart, fell to fourth. Hamlin, Wallace both got by him. Wallace putting the pressure on Logano as they battle for the lead. Logano struggled to get by lap traffic. I'd say more than a lot of the other cars in the top ten. It's probably going to be even worse for him. On the older tires, I think that might be the best opportunity for Wallace or Hamlin, depending on who will be right behind Logano at the time to strike for second. Because after Hamlin won that battle and Larson for third, his deficit between himself and the 23 in front of him is down to just six tenths of a second. And Wallace is now all over the back bumper of Logano. Wider arc on his entry into turn one, kind of floating the entry to the corner. Diamond cutting in the center to get the straight line exit speed off, but it does seem like. He isn't quite as good off the exit of the corner. Maybe rolling in a little too deep. I think he'll figure it out eventually, though. I just don't see Logano holding on very long. He's got the clean air for now. Once he gets into traffic, it's going to be even worse for the 22. That could be a definite dictator as to how many cars may go with two tires later in the race as well to try to gain track position to see how well this works for Logano. Again, he was originally running sixth at the end of stage one, so if he finishes better than that here in this 100-lap stage, I think it's well worth taking two tires going forward in a similar situation in the final stage of the race. Or even stage two to try to leapfrog track position. Only problem with that is if we do go green all the way through the final stage for some reason without an incident, that's 200 laps you're wanting to ask out of the left side. So granted, they can't make it on fuel anyway to the end, but they're going to want to run as long as they possibly can. That's the only problem with Logano having the strategy now as well with only getting 4.6 seconds of fuel in the race car. I don't know if he had enough in it to top off compared to the rest of the field. So that could make his next pit stop a little bit more lengthy with taking four tires because they are going to have to take those left sides off at some point. So by taking the two tires now, while it could help in stage two, it may hurt him when he comes onto pit road the next time and we get more drivers to take two tires because it's just going to end up putting him even further back in traffic. Short-term game for a long-term possible disadvantage. 
for the 22. But again, so far so good. You got to make the most out of the opportunity when you get the chance. It's contact between Ryan Blaney and Austin Dillon off turn two that last lap. And Blaney was outside of three wide after getting hit in the outside lane just a few laps before that. Again, lost a ton of track position on pit road. Lost about 11 to 12 spots. Then he was 23rd on the restart. He's still running 23rd now. So that tells me he gained a couple spots initially in the restart before he ended up getting punted. And then fell right back to where he was initially when they went back to green. Towards the tail end of the lead lap. Logano's gap Wallace and Hamlin just a little bit. Surprisingly. Lead is out to about a half a second to six tenths of a second for Logano. Lap 30 in stage two. About 70 laps to go in the second stage still. Christopher Bell is very slow and I think he's got a tire going down. Either that or a brake issue. Major issues for Christopher Bell in the 20 car. He is slow on the front stretch. He has dropped well off the pace. And I believe he's got a tire down or something in the steering of that race car is off as he is well off the pace. The car wants to go straight going into the corner. Bell to pit road. Heavy damage to the right front for Christopher. Probably got in the wall. Yeah, that or it either. And caution is out for debris. Likely from Christopher Bell. We're not sure. Uh, a debris caution is not charged to a particular driver. So at lap 112, yellow flag waves for debris with 25 cars on the lead lap, the last of which is Ricky Stenhouse. Looks like uh, Noah Gregson is in position for the free pass. And yeah, that's really odd on, on Christopher Bell's car. We'll go back and see if we can find some footage of what actually happened to Christopher Bell. But uh, there's no wall marks. It's on the inside of somebody's car. I, I mean, you can tell by, just like you said, looking at his right rear, he was hitting somebody. I'm looking in the orb. And uh, no visible marks on the bodywork. That's an odd one. But the tires were messed up. I, what I was saying is he's been in the inside of somebody's, uh, you know, left left door, wheel to wheel hard. All right, Larry Mac. Uh, we've seen two tires work work well. We've seen four tires. What this time? Well, Mike, we've only run 19 laps. We have 25 drivers on the lead lap. I think Joey Logano and Paul Wolf, their bets made right now, only going 19 laps there. But if you're back in the pack like his teammate Ryan Blaney, Chris Buescher that maybe just got the free pass, if nothing else, come and make more adjustments on this race car. But I think Joey Logano on his 22 has proved that two tires is not bad. One advantage he has, he picks the throttle up sooner and is able to be much smoother with it right now. Thanks, Larry. Twenty-five cars on the lead lap. Eric Jones will come in. Along with a couple of others, including Ryan Blaney, toward the tail end of the lead lap. Under caution for the second time today. Second caution of the day. First for incident debris from Christopher Bell's race car after he had he either made contact with somebody, gotten into the wall. It sounds like he maybe didn't get into the wall. Uh, looked like he was close to it at least when he was out of the groove initially in turns one and two. But uh, heavy damage that has dropped him well off the lead lap. Free pass is going to go to the 10 car of Noah Gregson as a result of this caution. So Gregson will get his lap back in 26th. So back to 26 cars on the lead lap again. There was 26 on the restart, but then with Bell losing the lap and now Gregson getting it back. Again, we are at... 26 cars on the lead lap. Tough break for Christopher Bell. He was running just outside the top 10 for most of this race today. 
not quite as good as some of the other Toyotas like Hamlin, Wallace, and even Truex in the top 10 here in the early going, but unfortunately not a great run at it. Uh, we'll see if he can come back and try to get the best finish possible that he can. Not sure how many laps he lost there. He might have lost two laps. Uh, looks like four. Bell fell four laps down before the caution came out. Uh, I think some of that he was on pit road as the caution was out as they were trying to fix the right front of that race car as well. So probably lost two laps, then the caution, and then lost two more. And that has put him four laps down in this one. And because we're not going to see many pit stops, he's not going to be able to take the wave around and get one of those laps back here. So, yeah, definitely a tough break there for Christopher Bell. Got 68 likes on the stream. Well, more than that many people watching, and that voted 145. Oh, uh, hang on, a couple more there. 149 votes uh, in the chat for who you think will win. Now make that 150. 37% uh, of you say Kyle Larson is going to win this race today, leading the poll. Other at 35%. Truex at 17%, Denny Hamlin at 11%. He's still got a little less than 70 laps to vote there. Uh, be sure to hit the like button again if you guys haven't done so yet. Our goal is to get to 150 likes, and we're only at 70. Again, well more than that watching currently. And be sure to hit the subscribe button if you're new so we can get to 5,000 subs on the channel today. We came into the stream just 27 subscribers shy of 5,000. Appreciate you guys coming along for the ride every NASCAR race weekend with me. Uh, live commentary streams every NASCAR race weekend, again, for NASCAR Truck, Xfinity, and Cup Series races, as well as Cup Series practice and qualifying. We'll have the schedule for Texas Motor Speedway a little bit later in the stream, uh, but as for right now, we'll be getting set for a restart coming up shortly here. And we'll have to see how this is going to go about. Set for the restart at 118 laps. Joey Logano, Bubba Wallace up on the front row. Hamlin and Larson. Elliott and Bowman. Track position. I'm sold. It is king today. And we are back to green. Logano mixing it up. Took off early in the zone that time. That's how you're supposed to do it. Look at Danny Hamlin. Inside Wallace for second. He has found the front. Been dominant on these short tracks. You got all four Hendrick cars are behind him. All four racing each other for position. How about that for a photo shoot? Rick wants them ahead of them, though. He doesn't want them racing each other for fourth. Or on back. Joey Logano out front. Uh, today is also a milestone for the captain, Roger Penske. Team Penske. 6,000 races across all disciplines worldwide. This is their 6,000th race. Logano trying to make it a memorable one for Roger Penske. Well, he needs to make sure he keeps that guy happy in that 22 car because that team has definitely turned the corner the last couple of weeks. And Paul Wolf, a big part of that. We're going to talk about North Wilkesboro test and what they found at it. Uh, carried that over to Richmond. Uh, we talk about how much they struggled, but it's also uh, it takes two veterans like that to be able to turn something around that quick. Looks to me like what they found at that tire test is they don't matter. They put the two <laughs> on, stayed in front of this field, chasing that clean air, track position. Watching the Bass Pro Shops camera on Martin Truex chasing uh, Josh Berry there for 10. And just ahead of him. Tommy Reddick and Kyle Busch, side by side. Penalties on uh, that round of pit stops. Uh, Josh Williams and David Starr, two fast up. Uh, some uh, Chase Briscoe radio. Briscoe currently eight. You guys are saying it's going to be impossible to pass pretty much all day, so the crew is going to be on you guys really all day to be in track position because I, I guarantee if we get the lead, we're not good enough to hold it. They're ready. He's not wrong. No, he's he's that. Not. You saw Larson dominate this race. Now you got a guy on two tires out there with Logano just driving off from him again. Um, you know, if you're Larson, even Chase Elliott, man, I'm very impressed with Chase Elliott today. they got to go through. Denny Hamlin and then Denny Hamlin's own uh, car of Bubba Wallace. Putting Denny Hamlin in front of those cars is going to be a tall order getting around him. 
And Blaney's still mired in traffic as a result of that double stop on the previous caution. Still trying to crack the top 20. Yeah, his car was was terrible on the on the first round. They they actually took the time to come back in and, and make the adjustment on the car because they knew they had to do something to make it better. But he's definitely passed some cars and moving forward. He goes around Brad Keselowski there, who we talked about, expected to run better. And now you see Chris Buescher on the outside of Brad Keselowski. These cars were both good on all the short tracks last year. They've been okay at a couple places at Bristol and Richmond, but not good here today. Heavy traffic right there. Tate Smith trying to stay on the lead lap there in that pack. There's one, two, three, Logano, Wallace, Hamlin. I can't say it enough. 52 laps are in this stage on two lap tires with that 22 car. Yeah, and, and the other thing that this does, Clint, this, this puts a lot of pressure on the rest of the teams to do two tires. Uh, so I, I'm... This strategy is going to really mix this field up on the, on the next pit stop. It takes me back to listen to Cliff Daniels. I thought he was teasing a little bit just because the cameras are on. I don't know what we're going to do. Two tires, could be two tires, no tires, four tires. He wasn't kidding. No. And he knew that ahead of time. And I think that answer, or that question has been answered with this 22 car, Paul Wolf making that call. This is the most laps Joey Logano has led on a non-drafting track since Phoenix in 2022 when he won the cup championship. And how about Ford? We haven't talked about them much this year. They've been beat up pretty bad. That Ford Mustang up front, their day is looking good. Well, we expect it. We expect Joey Logano to run good here. We expect Joey Logano to run good at Richmond. Well, we expect him to run good everywhere. And they expect the same thing. And they they have definitely struggled uh, until Richmond last week after the first two super speedway races. So Logano and a Ford out front. Bubba Wallace, second. A uh, four Toyota, half a second back. Denny Hamlin, one second off the lead in third for Toyota. And then the four Hendrick cars in a row, Larson, Elliott, Bowman, and Byron. Fourth through seventh, here's Michael Waltrip. Thanks, guys. I'm up here on the Hendrick Motorsports suite with over 1,500 of their employees. The beautiful ruby red shirts everywhere. This is Frank Edwards. He was... It's been uh, a lot of fun being here today. I told them I've done this for a long time, but this is the first time I ever watched a race at Mon of the spectator. I was always in, kind of involved in it a little bit, but uh, I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the day, and this is the same hat I wore when Bodine won the first race right here in 84. How about that? The same hat. Is that awesome? It's so much fun being up here with the friends and family. I remember Frank Edwards when he started with uh, Rick Hendrick, who came down from Palmer Springs, Virginia, down to Charlotte to sell cars, ended up owning a dealership, which then became more dealerships, uh, drag race boats, and then found his way to NASCAR, formed a team, almost went out of business, but his crew chief, Harry Hyde, said, Rick, the car is ready. The boys want to go. Jeff wants to race. Martinsville's one of his best tracks. Just let us go to Martinsville. Don't shut us down. And Rick said, all right, go to Martinsville. And the rest is history. That Bodie drag race is in the, the Heritage Center, his uh, museum down there. He took me through that one day. What a neat place that is. What a life. What a story. Here's a guy we hadn't talked about much on Monster Energy on board there. Gibbs Roy, Harrison Burton has been getting bounced around. Uh, they're off the bumper of John Hunter Nemechek. Gregson trying to get by. And it's still happening. Hold Justin on, Daly. And Cass Grolla. That's a pinball. I think Corey the Joy. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I was actually watching that, and it wasn't over yet because Corey the Joy put him three wide, and it continued for two more laps. That's hitting for the cycle, but not in a good way. No, he's definitely got tire marks on every corner. Kevin, I think, you know, looking out the window here, what's coming? Coming is, is lap traffic for Joey Logano and those two tires. I heard you say that earlier. That's going to be a deciding factor for me. I'll be sold if he can get up through, maneuver around and get up through this lap traffic as good as these guys on four tires. And that's that's really where we saw Bubba Wallace come on strong at the end of that last stage. It was right at the very end. So we're going to see what happens when they catch the back of this field. 
You saw Christopher Bell there. His problem was the wheel nut came off, uh, but the wheel lodged itself up there in the right front, so uh, no penalty, just he had to limp his way to pit road and get it replaced. Bell is three laps down. 39 to go in stage two. Joey Logano leading Bubba Wallace by seven tenths of a second as we take you Fox side by side. All right, Logano out ahead again, six tenths of a second above Bubba Wallace in the running order. We'll go through the full field here for the first time today at lap 143. Uh, so again, the 22 car in first, the 23 car in second. Denny Hamlin is in third. Kyle Larson fourth, and Chase Elliott rounds out the top five. Alex Bowman in sixth. William Byron seventh. Chase Briscoe eighth. Ross Chastain ninth, and Josh Berry is tenth. Martin Jerks Jr. in 11th, Tyler Reddick 12th, Kyle Busch 13th, 14th is Ryan Priest, 15th for Austin Sindrick, Carson Hosevar 17th, uh, sorry, Carson Hosevar 16th, Sindrick is 15th, Ty Gibbs is 17th, Eric Jones 18th, 19th is Ty Gillen, Ryan Blaney 20th, 21st for Daniel Suarez, Chris Buescher 22nd, Zane Smith 23rd, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. 24th, Brad Keselowski is 25th, 26th is Noah Gregson, he's still the last car in the lead lap, Daniel Hemrick, 30, uh, sorry, is 27th. Apologize for this. Uh, Daniel Hemrick is 27th. He's the first car one lap down. Michael McDowell, 28th. Right behind him, a lap down. John Hunter Nemechek, 29th. Kaz Grella, 30th. 31st for Josh Williams. He's two laps down. Harrison Burton, also two down in 32nd. 33rd for Austin Dillon. 34, three laps down is Justin Haley. Corey LaJoy, four laps down in 35th. Christopher Bell is uh, four laps down, 36th. David Starr is five laps down to 37th, and that rounds out the 37-car field. Just over an hour into the race today as we are approaching the end of Stage 2 here. Again, 34 laps to go in the second stage. Joey Logano still leads the way. We'll see if he can get the win. You're listening live on KRC to the Cookout 400 in Martinsville. Stunts are 28. Many others welcome in. Tammy Rhodes, Andrew Coleman. Also, welcome to the stream. What's up with Blaney? Yeah, he's been back in traffic, had a slow pit stop, um, lost about a dozen positions, and as a result of that, he's been back in around 20th ever since. So definitely a struggle there. They're just coming back from the commercial break. They're mad, they're frustrated, and they've got cars that aren't working well, so Logano's really going to have to pick his way past. Yeah, and that three car of Austin Dillon's actually only one lap down, so he definitely does not want to go two laps down, Mike. So it's over if he does. Yeah, it is, and I don't know how much he can actually fight it as bad as his car is. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have to go to you don't have the affordability to wait around because you see Bubba Wallace in his rear view already moving around trying to get that point up off the corner doing something different he gets stuck behind him one second Bubba's going to be there pounce yeah. on him and you see when, when he caught Austin Austin actually slowed down a little bit to keep his car on the bottom of the corner to even make it harder so Joey up the racetrack to try to dime in the corner to, to get a better run off the racetrack to try to find some position um to, to put himself uh, in, a, in a position to pass up off the corner, but the diamond uh, just goes up the racetrack in the center of the corner and they pull the back car back down to the curb on the exit of the corner. Just look how hard it is to pass. I mean, he was way faster than Austin Dillon as he caught him, and then look at this, Bob Walls on his bumper, now the 11, Denny Hamlin to his bumper. Accordion's very fast if you can't get around. Well, this is what we've talked about from the pre-race show all the way to this lap. You have to have a car that is versatile and, and capable to move around in traffic, where it puts you in a position where you become vulnerable uh, for everybody else to, to be better. And that's what happened to Kyle Larson at the end of the last stage. Bubba Wallace ran him down and almost passed him with the stage win. The problem for Logano right here is Dylan's got pretty good drive up off the corner. Well, as I see Logano, I was listening to Kevin tell me that he was maneuvering around, right? He's moving around trying to arc the corner in, diamond it, get that straight drive off. It doesn't want to answer the call. When he's pulling on the wheel to cut back to the left and turn underneath of it, it's slow to that. That makes him late to the throttle. Austin Dillon drives back off from him. Well, now Bubba Wallace is trying to do the same thing to Logano. He's trying to 
see if he can find something to put himself in a position to get a good run up off the corner to, to get position on, on Joey Logano. And that just stacked, he stacked everybody up behind him from first to fifth. Yeah, add Larson to the group now. Look how wide he is on the exit. Look, he turned. Oh, he's going to try to get on around him on the outside. That's a dirt racer. Always searching. Well, that's one thing that makes Kyle Larson so great. He'll, he'll be the first one to try something that you wouldn't think of to try, like up the racetrack in Martinsville in the second group to go past somebody. But he's going to move that car around until he finds something better. Well, things are about to change. They're about to come up on David Starr, who is four laps down. Uh, Christopher Bell, who is three down. And uh, Harrison Burton trying to stay one lap down. It's going to get very crowded here. Oh, you see Joey Logano give Austin Dillon a shot, but just not going to move him out of the way right there in the middle of the corner. Well, especially with a car on your outside, David Starr. And like we say, Austin wants to do everything he can do to not be two laps down. I think it also shows you how hard it is to pass. They got that very fast. That's true, but I think when we started today, as we see Kyle Larson get on the inside of Denny Hamlin, can't quite finish it up off the corner. Now here comes Chase Elliott. And the rest is to follow. Bowman, Byron, Briscoe, they're all catching them. They're going to be stacked up all the way back basically to ninth or 10th. Somebody's going to start moving each other. What you call that? The chrome horn. Yep. It's fixing to come out. Show its rear its ugly head. Well, everybody knew to start today exactly what they were into as far as traffic and lap traffic and just how difficult it, it, it becomes later in the run, especially in a situation with Logano where his tires aren't as good. I'm sure, he's run good while he had clean air, but now he's caught the back of the field and, and stalled out. So, Yeah, and you're only talking 20 laps to stage two in, so everybody knows what that is. He put two tires on Put two tires on Joey oh. Logano. March that thing to the front. Clean air. He's been in the lead the whole time. There You're you going to go. have more cars zoomed I, into this. I always, I always like that. Being in the, in, in the position that Denny Hamlin is in, to be able to say, all right, that's mine. I can hit it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. He's the co-owner of that 23 car with Michael Jordan. That's mine. I can hit it. Bubba way up the racetrack, doing whatever they can do to get out of that stripe, that stripe of rubber on the racetrack, starting to build up, get slick, just keeps getting worse and worse. Whatever problem you were fighting, it just keeps compounding worse and worse. Well, we've, we've seen Denny Hamlin make so many passes through the field to get into this groove. Clear. Got him. Bubba's not going to give up on that outside. I think he likes what he found there. Kyle Larson unable to capitalize there on the inside. Now he's moved back to the bottom, drove right back to the inside of Denny Hamlin. These guys are frustration sets in right here. Look that's the, what happens. Look at the run Denny Hamlin got off of that corner. That That's going to work on Joey Logano too, I believe. He was, went completely to the outside. Now he's rolling the bottom. Well, it's that versatility that we talked about. He's able to run that lane up, and he's able to run the curb. So, look at him move up, trying to diamond that thing back off. You're not going to be able to diamond it up. You can see how low Logano's leaving the corners. That's what's prompting and tempting him to try this outside. You see Logano try to split that rubber to get in the lane of Denny Hamlin, and that kind of disrupt the run. But Logano's car is just not as good as Denny Hamlin's through the middle of the corner. It's definitely not as good in traffic. Hamlin giving Logano the chrome horn. Got him a bit sideways in the center of turns one and two, but could not get underneath him there. Working up on 13 laps to go yet in stage two. Hamlin again working the outside. Getting some clean air. A straight line exit off the exit of every corner. Logano moving up to try to take that line away just a little bit that last time through turns one and two. Hamlin all over the back of the 22 car and actually gets to his outside for a brief moment in the center of three and four. Logano's going to do all he can here to try to hold on to the end of the stage. Hamlin moves him up the racetrack. Hamlin to the inside. Logano to the outside. Remember, Joey's got the two older left side tires. Denny Hamlin underneath him. Looking like one of the stronger cars today. He's made several passes through Stage 1, Stage 2, and now working on Logano. 
struggle to get around him all the way through stage one as well, but the tire difference might be all Hamlin needed to get by Joey Logano on top of the front bumper this time around. Hamlin to the lead on the back straightaway. And now Logano on the outside of the 22 car, or on the outside of the 11 car. Not quite clear yet. Now he's clear. 10 to go, stage 2 for Hamlin. New leader of this race. This is the third different driver to lead at least one lap. Hamlin trying to start 3 for 3 on short tracks. Last driver to win three straight short track races in the NASCAR Cup Series was Rusty Wallace back in 1993. Hamlin trying to put himself in rare company. Not the first time he would do that in a major statistical category. Look back to his Daytona 500 wins as well, getting three in a five-year stretch. Back-to-back, -back, very few drivers have ever done that as well, and now trying to win three straight short track races. And Logano still holding up everybody else behind him, and Hamlin's driving away as he enters into more lap traffic. Chase Briscoe and William Byron battling for position. Briscoe making the pass for seventh on the 24. Byron, Ross Chastain and Knight now has closed the gap on both cars. Uh, first time Chastain has really been in the top ten today. Josh Berry still hanging out in tenth. And Truex, who started in the top five, has fallen all the way back to 11th place and is slowly slipping backwards in the running order as this race progresses. Wallace to the inside of Logano finally as he looks for second. And Logano, now that he's in heavier traffic than before, is starting to really fade at the end of this stage. Seven to go. We'll see how long he can hold on for. I'd still consider this a successful stage considering he was sixth at the end of stage one. And now is Larson going to be able to capitalize and get underneath the 22 quickly once the 23 of Wallace clears? Joey Logano, Larson's going to try to stay underneath him. He's got to stay as close to the back bumper of the 23 car as possible, and he did not. Logano cuts down to the bottom in front of Larson. Larson to the outside groove. Elliott to the back bumper of the 22. Gave him a shot, got him a little loose. Larson still to the outside of the 22. We'll see if he can make this work. Third place clearing Joey Logano at a second and a half off the lead. Great move on the outside by Larson. Joey Logano still in fourth place, 1.7 seconds back. And Chase Elliott is two seconds off the lead in fifth. Elliott now quickly to the inside of Logano, putting the bumper to him, just as everybody else had pretty much done in the way to getting around Logano here recently. Logano really starting to slip backwards here, trying to hold on for all he can before he loses too much track position. Has four more laps to hold on to the end of the stage. Make it three now. Bowman is there. Didn't need to use the bumper to get underneath the 22. Logano is struggling. Boy, that car is clipped. Once he lost the lead, it was straight backwards after that. Needed a strong enough car to be able to do it. Hamlin's was definitely strong enough. This late in the run on top of it. And Logano in danger of falling out of the top five here. Bowman can beat him. Near contact in the middle of turns three and four. Briscoe's closed the gap to the back of the 48 car. Briscoe might have a shot at Logano as well. Coming up on the final lap of stage two. This time by big door slam between Logano and Bowman. And that caused the 14 to get into the back of the 48. Logano was able to clear as a result of that happening. Bowman charging hard back up the inside again. But I think that might have been all she wrote for the stage, unless Bowman gets really dirty here in 3 and 4, which I don't expect to happen. Logano should be able to hold on to fit to the end of the stage. And he does. Not by much, but he does. Denny Hamlin, meanwhile, at the front of the field will win stage 2. Didn't lead a lot of laps en route to doing so, but Hamlin out in front to get his second stage win of the year. Bubba Wallace ends up finishing in P2. Kyle Larson third. Chase Elliott, fourth. Joey Logano, fifth. Alex Bowman, sixth. Chase Briscoe, seventh. William Byron, eighth. Ross Chastain, ninth. Josh Berry rounds out the top ten again. That is your stage two results. And Larson, when he won stage one, that was his fourth stage win of the season. He already had the most stage wins with three, but adds another one to that total, so picking up that other playoff point. 184, I got to keep the poll open for a little bit longer. We have a dead tie. We need to, as soon as that tie is broken, I will end the poll in the chat. 36% uh, of you say Larson and other is going to win the race. 16% with Truex, 12% with Hamlin. Somebody that hasn't voted yet in the chat, vote so we can break the tie in the poll before I end it as we're at the end of stage two. 
There it is. It's broken. The 186 vote broke it. And we'll lock it in. 36% of you say somebody other than Larson Truex and Hamlin will win. 35% say Larson, 16% for Truex, 12% for Denny Hamlin. 186 votes, so greatly appreciate that. A lot of you voted, a lot of you were watching, but only 90 likes, despite the fact we had 186 votes in that poll. Appreciate you guys voting in the poll, but hit the like button. That helps these streams out a lot more. Uh, we had well, really only half of that in the likes department, so we can definitely get to our goal of 150 likes on the stream today, uh, I do believe. Need a lot of you guys to smash that like button. We're at 91 right now. Still have about half the race remaining as stage two has just ended. Uh, Lovey Barkley, thanks for tuning back in. See you in the chat again today. Regine Huddleston, Mike H., Sharita Cooper, Patriot Republic. Thanks for tuning in as well. Uh, the channel you can watch the race on today is Fox Sports 1. So if you turn on your local Fox affiliate today and wondered why the race isn't on, it is on Fox Sports 1. It's the first cup race on FS1 this season. They'll still have more races on main Fox, but it'll be kind of flipping every other week for the most part uh, the rest of the season. 100 likes. Hey, 150 is the goal. We're very close to 100, though. We're at 96 now. We can get to 100 before they get back to green. But uh, should have pit stops real quick. <laughs> Four tire stop. I don't know if that's accurate or not. We'll have to wait to see what the pit stop time was for Blaney. I don't believe he picked up 12 positions on a four tire stop. I'd have to believe that was probably two tires if Fox's graphic was off. Uh, it worked well for Logano, but again, as I kind of mentioned, Logano having to take four because he only had 4.9 seconds of fuel in the car. Don't think they got it full. So he was going to have to be on pit road longer this time. That seemed to be the case because Logano ended up dropping outside the top 10 by way of these pit stops, but uh, Denny Hamlin, who won stage two, wins the race off pit road. Chase Elliott was second. Well, no, Chase Elliott looked like he might have been speeding on pit road. We'll have to wait and see, but he passed, like legitimately passed Bubba Wallace in the last uh, segment or two on pit road uh, between like the timing lines. He was on the outside, Wallace was on the inside, and he was just driving right around him. So either Bubba was going way too slow or Elliott was speeding. So one or the other. One driver is either being too safe or one was too aggressive. Uh, Blaney did take two tires only. 5.7 seconds stop. So he gained 12, but Fox's graphic was wrong. It was a two-tire stop, not a four, which I kind of figured uh, with him gaining that many positions on pit row. So this is the first time Blaney's been in the top 10 today. He'll be eighth. Well, outside of when he qualified top 10 because he actually started uh, in row number five for this one. But he did not get stage points at the end of stage one. Started in the top ten, but kind of quickly fell outside the top ten on that first initial start. And he has been outside the top ten ever since. Show more of the raw feed. Yeah, I'll scroll down uh, a little bit more. As I do that, uh, it is our stage, stage, stage two diecast showing. And because it is the into being huge on the 40th anniversary, it's where Hendrick Motorsports got the first of many wins over the career. Larson's got a special paint scheme. 
I got a number five card paid scheme here today. It is not Kyle Larson. I actually don't even own a Larson diecast. I need to get on that at some point. But uh, this is one of my favorites growing up as a kid because it is the Tony the Tiger card. Terry Labonte, this is a 2003 diecast. Uh, most notably, actually won the Southern 500 at Darlington with this uh, very paint scheme for his final career win in 2003. Oddly enough, also that season was his last top 10 points finish. But yeah, Terry Labonte, 2003, Tony the Tiger, Kellogg's uh, die cast. Uh, definitely one of my favorites growing up. So I wanted to show this off today with uh, Larson on the pole. And again, Hendrick Motorsports kind of appreciation weekend, I guess, for them. I uh, figured that I would show off this die cast. So uh, here you go. Love those uh, Tiger stripes on the race car. I'm a Detroit Tigers fan, too, so that makes it kind of fun in that way. You got the milk splashing on the back of the car, and you still got that rooster from the Kellogg's on the side of it. And the uh, the Toucan Fruit Loop guy, uh, whatever his name is, that's also on the car. So it's, uh, it's good for kids, and I'd like to say I still kind of act like a kid from time to time. So there we go. Um, that is the diecast for today. Lap 189 of 211. Uh, Daniel Suarez too fast exiting, and Ryan Blaney got two tires. He got four on the last caution, yeah. so he just got two. Picked up eight spots, two tires for Ty Gibbs, but look at the contact here. Gibbs at the top trying to come out. Boom. Ooh. Then uh, watch down here at the bottom. Watch Logano pull out, gets blocked by Bowen, has to check up here and stocks them all up. That's his two spots lost. Close quarters. Yeah, that's a traffic jam right there. Daniel Hemrick, the free pass on this, the third caution of the day. A big win to that Chase Elliott in a nine car. To be able to put this 40th anniversary win together for Hendrick Motorsports. Man. Well, and on top of that, just for Chase Elliott in general, we, we've talked yeah. about maybe not uh, doing everything that they – wanted to do as far as performance but to be up front and have a chance here that's all you can ask for well whatever we talk about during the race you will hear all week long on race hub it's been a busy week on fs1 expert analysis and opinions 6 p.m eastern time drew blickenster for guests on tuesday chad canals and eric almaroli yesterday's winner here on wednesday and chris busher will be on race hub thursday all the news and all the controversy on NASCAR Racer. Adam looking pretty tough right there. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. Got a mean face. Hey, there's a Martinsville hot dog. He's ordering another set right now. More or less. Speaks. Yep. Bring me some more. Another dozen. <laughs> some more. A dozen. Uh, Jamie? Well, Mike, we were talking about the 22 and staying on those left side tires, about 180 laps. No wonder why Joey Logano was falling back. Check this out, the wear on the left rear right here. Look at this flap and all the wear on the left front as well. And hang on and hang on for him to take four tires on that stop. We'll see what he can do now. Wow, 180 laps on one set of left side tires. All right, Hamlin inside, Chase Elliott outside. Zane Smith returned to pit road to tighten the loose wheel. And we're ready for stage three. Hamlin out in front of the field, going to pace the inside lane for the race start. Green flag back in the air at Martinsville. Chase Elliott on the front row as well. A little bit of bottlenecking going on in the bottom as Hamlin waited to the very last second to go. And that almost caused a wreck, really, in the deep portion of the pack. Saw somebody get squirrely. Uh, in the middle of the front straightaway. But nonetheless, Chase Elliott timed the race start out just as good, if not better, than Denny Hamlin, who was the control car. Elliott nearly gets to the lead off turn two, but off turn four, he will get to the lead. First time today, Chase Elliott out in front. First time in a long time, Chase Elliott is leading here at Martinsville. Gained a spot on pit road, and right there, he's going to get another one on the restart. Hamlin's had great long run speed. So we'll see if he can get to him eventually, but Hamlin may be suffering a bit on the short run. Did not fire off well at all. Couple of cars side by side. Logano Bowman for fifth place, battling for position. All four Hendrick cars inside the top eight for most of this race today. Really, ever since the end of stage one, they've all pretty much been up there. 
And we'll see how long Blaney can hold on those left side tires. We saw the blistering from Joey Logano taking the right sides only when he did. And then uh, Ryan Blaney just did that now to get track position, get into the top 10. But if this goes green, obviously they're going to have to pit at some point in time in this stage. But Blaney may be the first to have to pit as a result of taking those tires. So the best thing that can happen here for Blaney, we run about 50, 60 plus laps, just get inside the fuel window. And then a caution comes out and you top off again, take the four tires and kind of cycle out where you do. And you're so long yet to the end of the race that I don't think anybody's going to want to take two tires knowing there will be about 150 laps from that point to the finish. It'll be tough to hang on. Blaney putting a fight to William Byron in the 24. Again, we saw Legato do really well for about the first 60, 70 laps or so of Stage 2 on his older left side tires. Able to get back to the gas just a little bit sooner than a lot of other drivers getting a slight bit better turn off the exit of the corner, so maybe that'll be the case here for the 12 on top of the much-needed track position after struggling for most of the day. Right about where he qualified again in ninth. Reddick joins the top 10 for the first time today, getting by Ross Chastain on the restart. Shout-out to Carson Hosevar having a good run in the 77 as well, currently 14th, and Todd Gillen, who had to come back down on the pit road after uh, his wedge adjuster was stuck in the back of the race car, the back windshield of the race car. Equipment out of the box. He was at the tail end of the longest line on the restart to begin stage two. He's driven all the way up to 13th since then. Some of that could have been because of tire strategy, but although I don't see... No, Gillen took four tires because his pit stop was 11.9 seconds and actually was one of the slowest pit stops at pit road, so he might have actually been a little bit higher in the running order than that. Now he's three wide on the outside of Ty Gibbs and Eric Jones. Contact between Gibbs and Hosevar as Ty had to get out of that three-wide middle situation before things got too nuts. Carson got into the side of him as a result. Now the 41 of Ryan Priest is three-wide with Kyle Busch underneath him. We've got a caution somewhere on the racetrack. And it's the 20 of Christopher Bell for the second time today having an issue. Hey, as I say that, it's about as lucky as it gets as the right front lug nut falls off the wheel and it stays in there. That was a very lucky situation that they were able to uh, survive. So Bell stays two laps down. Michael McDowell should be the free pass. Uh, this is the fourth caution flag. Does this put us in any kind of a window? You like it, Larry? We're going to stay out? What we do? It's it's a bit of a stretch to make it for here. If you could stretch it to 175 laps, right now we got 197. So uh, Bell was inside Cavs Grollo when the car broke loose there. Yeah, it looks like he just spun all on his own. And who, who knows the, the damage that that right front tire did and what it did to the balance and dragging everything on the bottom of the car when the tire was flat. That's right. It certainly didn't help anything. Yeah, it just spun out. Trying to stay off the car on the outside. Hang on, Coach. Yeah, and in that, in that dark strip of rubber around the corner, it just becomes slick. And if you get the right rear tire or get it uh, hung in the rubber wrong, it just it becomes difficult to hold on to the car. Pit road is open. No takers up front. No, not among the top ten. Truex looking. Is he coming? Yes. And so is Ty Gibbs. Kyle Busch behind him. And Brad Keselowski. The rest of the leaders stay out. Under caution. 204 laps completed Martinsville. Plenty of contact. Smile. You found it. Under commercial during the caution flag or fourth yellow of the race today. Second for incident. First of the final stage in the early laps. And the uh, second caution for incident of the day goes to Christopher Bell, just as the first one was. 106 likes on the stream thus far. Thank you for everybody hitting that like button. Our goal is 150, though. We're 44 away, still just under half the race remaining. We will take a quick ad break ourselves here for the second time. You're listening live on KRC. So again, Christopher Bell spin towards the back of the pack has brought out the caution. It's been a rough day for him being a couple laps down after the first incident. Probably going to lose another lap here. It looks like he's two or three laps down. 
I think he might have even taken the wave around um, to get one of his laps back under the caution before this. Nobody else took the wave around, it looked like. The free pass during the Stage 2 break went to Daniel Hemrick to get his lap back. And now Michael McDowell is back on the lead lap with this caution coming out as he gets the free pass. Just under an hour and a half into this race today. Pretty good race flow so far. Four cautions total. Again, two stage breaks, two cautions for incident. Chase Elliott, currently your race leader, has not won since the 2022 season. Uh, missed seven races last season. Six to injury, one because of a suspension. And uh, as far as this season goes, he is... Uh, oddly enough, battling the driver that he uh, ended up getting that one race suspension with last year, Denny Hamlin, uh, the guy who has won the only two points-paying short track races and the short track at the LA Coliseum in the Bushlight Clash exhibition race at the start of the year. So Hamlin might be the guy to beat. Larson, who had the track position early, looked like he was going to be the one to beat. He was my pick to win the race as well uh, here today. He's currently in fourth, still very much in contention uh, but hasn't been quite as good on pit road as some of the other drivers around him, like the 11 and the 9 team, and that has resulted in him running where he is at. Uh, pretty much restarts and uh, mainly pit road, I would say, is the difference in drivers being able to pass their fastest lap of the race during the first green flag run of the race, which was during stage one, and outside of Byron, and Hamlin, everybody has ran their fastest lap of the day prior to lap 20. And we are currently at lap 207 with 193 laps to go. We'll go through the full field running order here prior to this race starting. And Chase Elliott leads. Denny Hamlin is second. Bubba Wallace third. Kyle Larson fourth. Alex Bowman fifth. Joey Logano sixth. Chase Briscoe seventh. William Byron eighth. Ryan Blaney ninth. Tyler Reddick is tenth. Ross Jastain in eleventh. Todd Gill in twelfth. Eric Jones, 13th, Carson Hosevar, 14th, Ryan Fries, 15th, 16th is Austin Sindrick, Josh Berry, 17th. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 18th. Noah Gregson, 19th. Chris Buescher is 20th. Martin Tricks Jr., 21st. Ty Gibbs, 22nd. Kyle Busch, 23rd. Brad Keselowski, 24th. Daniel Hemrick, 25th. 26th is Daniel Suarez. Kaz Grello, 27th. 28th, Josh Williams. 29th, Michael McDowell. He's the last car again on the lead lap. 30th is John Hunter Nemechek. Zane Smith, 31st. Harrison Burton, 32nd. Justin Haley, 33rd. 34th is Austin Dillon. Corey LaJoy, 35th. Christopher Bell, two laps down, still 36. David Starr rounds out the 37-car field. Green flag is already back in the air. Chase Elliott electing the inside lane on the restart. Quickly pulls clear off the exit of turn two on Hamlin and Wallace. Hamlin clear for second. Wallace clear for third at the very front of the field. And now a battle side-by-side -side between the Hendrick teammates of Kyle Larson and Alex Bowman for fourth. And Larson wins that battle, cuts Bowman off on the front stretch. Couple Fords side by side in the top 10, still trying to get situated. Logano, Briscoe, Blaney underneath the 24 of Byron. Logano swinging to the inside, gets hit from behind by Briscoe going down into the first turn, hangs on to it. All the way through the corner, still hanging on to six, almost squeezed the 24 of Byron into the wall off the exit of the corner as they still jockey for position. Elliott quickly four tenths of a second out ahead of Denny Hamlin at the very front of the field. In the early going of this restart. It's still, you got to be mindful, it's only halfway. And Byron is going to clear Logano. Yeah, and you look right there on the outside, that's Todd Gill in the 30, 38 car. Running in eighth spot. Overcame that penalty for uh, leaving the pits with the wedge wrench in the back window. Nice comeback. Well, we have some uh, radio from Todd Gibbling from that Mitski on pit road. Alright, you want to go through the practice? There can't be any good news, so enlighten me. Well, the good news for me is we got you driving, so I'm excited about that. Our pace ain't too bad. We'll adjust accordingly here at Crescent Race to try to help you at some point. And they did. They've got him up in the top ten. Well, what was the bad news? I thought it was all pretty good, but I would say <laughs> the bad news is, buddy, you got to come back in. You it was a long time you getting there. Long time getting there. After having to make that extra pit stop. Jamie? 
uh, Chase Elliott leading right now. He told us in practice and qualifying yesterday that they felt like their setups had gotten stale over the last couple of years here. So they had a different approach this time around. And he said so far so good in this race. The car's doing what he wants it to. Just a little bit tight to start this run. And Mike, so far today now, he's like more laps today than he has all season. 23 so far, Jamie. And pulling away. More than a second over Denny Hamlin, one of, if not the largest leads of the day. Well, what those comments tell me is, you know, they felt like they didn't keep up with the evolution of the way that things change. And a lot of times when you go to a racetrack, you think you need to stay exactly the way that you are. And that's not how this garage works. It evolves on a weekly basis. Everybody continues to get better. There's way too many smart minds and people. And if you just sit around and do the same things that you've been doing, before you know it, you're way behind. Watching these two for a while. Josh Berry, Stenhouse Berry. Barr just hasn't, he's lost some track position. Now you noted that earlier, Kevin. It just hasn't been able to uh, overcome that. We're told they had a slow pit stop on the four that time, which is what put Josh Berry uh, back here battling for an 18. That wasn't the first time either. He lost a couple positions before that. Still slipped and sliding around, bouncing off one another. So uh, Chris Bush are getting into the picture there and the built submarines.com cam. And we have foot cam on board of Busher. Oh, here we go. Watch that throttle pedal. Yeah, you heard him get loose up off the corner, but you'll notice when, when you hear the gear shift, you see his foot stay wide open. The shift too. Did you hear? So on the back stretch, he actually lifted a little bit, burped that throttle to put it in gear. That time, he left it wide open. No, so what happens with, with this strategy in there, Clint, when you get up off the corner and the car starts to spin the back tires, if it gets into that rev limiter, the car actually shut off. You know, oh, okay. If you don't have the, the, the gear shifter preloaded. So uh, when you're in the middle of the straightaway and the gear shifter is preloaded, you don't, you don't have to let off the throttle. But that's the only disadvantage to a package like this. Uh, is if it spins the wheels and gets up into that rev limit, it'll actually shut the car off for a brief moment. Well, he definitely used the throttle to shift once, and then that first, on the front straightaway left it wide open, like you said. And I tell you, you can hear how much faster that shift was, too. It's all about time, and, and when you get those shift strategies in there and you don't have to let off down the straightaway, it just it just takes less time to do everything and makes you run faster. And if I'm hearing this right, you're picking up that this is something that's evolved this year. This isn't something you did last year with your car, right? Or did you? I did. You did? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this, 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 uh, all three of these manufacturers have some sort of shift strategy. And, uh, you see the, the Ford strategy right there, but you see how smooth it is with everything that they have going on and the way that they can make that, that car fall into gear. I mean, you could hear it. You have to see it. You could hear how much quicker and smoother that shift was than the one prior. In the final stage of the race, and Chase Elliott leading Denny Hamlin by two, Bubba Wallace by two and a half, and Kyle Larson by three seconds. All right, under a commercial break, Denny Hamlin in second, Bubba Wallace is in third, Kyle Larson fourth, and Alex Bowman rounds out the top five. In sixth is William Byron, Joey Logano seven, Todd Gillen eighth, Chase Briscoe in ninth, and Tyler Reddick rounds out the top ten. On the two-tire strategy, Ryan Blaney has fallen back to 11th place, Ross Chastain 12th, Ryan Priest 13th, Eric Jones 14th, and Austin Sindrick is 15th. 16th for Noah Gregson, Carson Hosevar 17th, Daniel Suarez 18th, Josh Berry 19th, and Chris Buescher is 20th. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. 21st, Ty Gibbs 22nd, Mark Tricks Jr. 23rd, Kyle Busch 24th, Kaz Grala is 25th. 26th place for Brad Keselowski, Daniel Hemrick 27th, 28th for Michael McDowell, and Josh Williams is 29th. He's the last car on the lead lap. Justin Haley, first car, one lap down in 30th. Zane Smith, 31st. John Hunter Nemechek, 32nd. Harrison Burton, 33rd. Austin Dillon, 34th. Corey LaJoy, 35th. 36th for Christopher Bell. David Starr is 37th. That rounds out the 37-car field. Other race stats, our current average race speed is 72.94 miles per hour. Just about an hour and 39 minutes into this race. 
Uh, 230 of 400 laps completed, so 170 still to go. Most laps led is for Kyle Larson with 87 laps led, leading every lap of Stage 1 before losing the lead on the pit road due to a two-tire strategy call by Logano. Logano went on to lead 83 laps to begin Stage 2 before Denny Hamlin led the final 24 laps and ended up winning Stage 2. Uh, Larson again won Stage 1 with that, so two playoff points were already awarded today, one for the 11, one for the 5, and our current leader, Chase Elliott, took the lead on the first green flag lap at first restart of Stage 3. He's led every lap since. He's led the third most laps today with 38 laps led. Four different drivers have led a lap today, three lead changes, and again, four cautions, two for Christopher Bell, uh, with the debris coming out from Bell's race car after he had an issue back in Stage 2 at lap 112. And then lap 202, he went for a spin shortly after the beginning of the final stage. And as far as the other two cautions, they were the stage ends at lap 80 and 180 for stage 1 and stage 2. So those are the only cautions so far. Be sure to hit the like button again on the stream if you guys haven't done so. Subscribe for more NASCAR content so we can get to our goal of 5,000 subscribers on the channel before the end of this stream today. Our goal for likes is 150 as of right now, I'll check to see where we are at midst of this stream. Uh, 112 likes so far. So we are about 38 likes away from our goal. Um, still one more pit stop, pit stops to take place for the third time today. And more than likely at that point, the final time. Uh, Simon Poe, thanks for tuning into the stream. Um, see quite a few others in the chat uh, that maybe I didn't see before. appreciate each and every one of you tuning in as well. Uh, Hercules Harrigan, welcome into the stream. JoJo, thanks for tuning in as well. And many of you. break, continue our live commentary coverage of the Cookout 400 at Martinsville on KRC. Hamlin is slightly closing on Elliott as Elliott is getting into lap traffic now. Just lapped Austin Dillon. And he's got a lot more single file lap traffic ahead of him. His lead was about two and a half seconds and now Hamlin is down to 1.6 seconds off the race lead and is going to continue to close the longer it takes Elliott to get by the lap traffic. The intervals between the top 10 and the running order, uh, 1.5 seconds off the lead now is Hamlin and still closing hard. Bubba Wallace in third is 2.1 seconds behind race leader Chase Elliott. Kyle Larson 2.6 seconds back and forth. William Byron in fifth, 3.6 seconds off the lead. A little further back is Alex Bowman at six, 4.7 seconds back. 5.4 4 seconds off the lead is Joey Logano in seventh. Todd Gillen again, great run in eighth, six seconds off the lead. Chase Briscoe, six and a half seconds back in ninth. And Tyler Reddick is 8.7 seconds off the lead in tenth. So those are the intervals between the top ten and the running order as well to this point. Still, again, 160 laps to go in this race. The tough pass is going to be to Josh Williams in the 16. Uh, running a part-time schedule, he is the last car on the lead lap uh, trying to stay there. That's a great run by him. As we've seen all day, when the leader has caught the back of the pack, that's really what's bunched things up and allowed the second, third, and fourth place car to, to catch up and fill that gap pretty quick. Tyler Reddick has made his way up into the top 10, Regan. Mike, that's right. He's been steadily progressing his way forward all day after starting 19th, trying to get only his second top 10 in nine starts at Martinsville. That car, Billy Scott told me, is identical to his teammate, Bubba Wallace, because they struggled to practice. It worked out really good for them to know that they could lean on those notes as to what Bubba had going as he was a little bit better at qualifying. Right now, just a little bit too tight in traffic for Tyler Reddick as he tries to work his way forward. But he doesn't have to worry about traffic right now. He's got a huge gap in, in front of him. So uh, this should be a time when, when we really see what his car has. And we see right behind him with Brian Blaney on those two tires. Hanging in a pretty good play. They are, just like we saw with Logano. I'm sold. You get down to the closing laps of this race and an untimely caution comes out. I'm staying out, two tires, something. I want clean air, track position. It's... 
you can see these guys and the struggle they have just getting one position pass takes 15, 20, 30 laps to get it done. Now Daniel Suarez, the first car on four tires back at 17th place and trying to rebound from uh, the speeding penalty back at lap 180. Chase Elliott leading for a Rick Hendrick and their foot with Michael Walter. Well, guys, the celebration continues. I'm with Chad Caps, who's a machinist at the shop and has been at Hendrick's for 18 years. How cool is this event today? This is very awesome. Thank you, Mr. H. Everybody's saying a big thank you to Mr. H. I know Mr. H is a family man, and this is your wife. I'm glad y'all came out to the races. Are you enjoying the experience? Yes, it's really awesome. Awesome. It's fun back here, guys. I'm glad we're able to wander around and say hello to these folks. Woo! Thanks, Michael. Well, uh, Rick Hendrick not able to be here today. He is recovering from knee replacement surgery. He was scheduled to drive the pace car today, but earlier today, uh, earlier this weekend, he talked with Chris Myers and talked about the Hendrick secret ingredient. So we, we see Jeff Gordon for broadcasting and how he's got his business owner starter vest. That you walk out of vest. <laughs> how much longer do you want to do this? Until uh, it's no fun anymore. My mind is like it was when I was 18 or 20 years old. Legacy at Hendrick Motorsports is not me. It's the people that won the races and they're there every day. And I want that to go on long after I'm gone. It's the people. Absolutely. You're only as good as the people that you have around you, and Rick Hendrick is, is one of the best at putting people in the right places. Jeff Gordon, a, a big part of, of everything that, that goes on, but I can promise you one thing, Clint. He also likes to win. Oh, yeah. But I will say this about people. People need a leader to follow, and there's no better leader than, than a guy like that. That mindset, the work ethic, the drive, the determination, the will to win, he wins in everything, whether it's in this racetrack, or on Monday selling cars. That means he's winning. Well, this is what we talked about, Clint, when the leader catches the back of the pack. We've, we've seen this before. Denny Hamlin just becomes more able to maneuver his car in traffic. We saw it the last run with, with uh, a different leader, with Joey Logano leading the race, and now it's Chase Elliott. He caught that 16 car about to, about to get passed again by Denny Hamlin, who can maneuver his car better. Side by side for the lead. Hamlin trying to use the lap car as a pick of Josh Williams as they both get around him. Great job by Elliott. Oh, Wallace blows the corner. Going into turn three. Gets up into the lap car, and Larson's underneath him for third. Meanwhile, drag race at the front of the field between Hamlin and Elliott still for the race lead. Elliott did a great job not getting stuck behind the 16 car when Hamlin tried to force him there, and now they're still door-to-door. -door. And again, Larson still underneath the 23 in a simultaneous battle for third place. William Byron just behind the five in the 23 and fifth looking to lurk and pounce for position once one of them is clear of the other. And if they get situated quickly, single file, they could have a chance to catch the 11 and the 9 if they stay door-to-door -door for even just a few laps longer than that. Hamlin on the curb on the inside, Elliott on the outside. Hamlin slips up the racetrack just a bit, making a bit of contact off turn 4. Wallace does hang on to third even after that mistake. Nearly more contact off turn 2. See, we're driving hard right now, and they're going to be using their tires up, running door-to-door -door like this. It's built a gap up with the lap cars in front of them, though. Elliott's so close to clearing off turn four that time on Hamlin. Hamlin drives it in really deep in the center of the corner, stays door-to-door -door again. Might have touched again. Close quarters racing around this very tight racetrack, the shortest on the NASCAR Cup Series circuit. At least as far as the points-paying races go. And Wallace is definitely reeling back in on Hamlin and Elliott. Elliott went a bit wider that time, trying something different. Almost costed him the lead. Not sure if that was intentional or not. Hamlin's got his bumper out in front of the nine car off the exit of turn four. And finally, Hamlin is clear. Another lead change, our fourth of the day. And the second different time, Denny Hamlin has led. And it's the first time somebody has led multiple times in this race today. Stage two winner, Denny Hamlin back out in front. And again, the long run speed seems to be there with the 11 car. That is working wonders for him through the first two short track races. And again, here today to this point at Martinsville. Still 142 laps to go. 
A one-tenth of a second lead for Denny Hamlin over Chase Elliott in second. Again, Bubba Wallace is third. Kyle Larson fourth. William Byron in fifth. Alex Bowman sixth. Joey Logano seventh. Todd Gillen eighth. Chase Briscoe ninth. Ryan Blaney tenth. Tyler Reddick in 11th, Ross Chastain 12th, Ryan Priest 13th, Eric Jones 14th, Austin Sindrick 15th, 16th is Noah Gregson, Daniel Suarez 17th, Carson Hosevar 18th, Josh Berry 19th, Chris Buescher is 20th, 21st for Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Ty Gibbs 22nd, Martin Trix Jr. 23rd, Kyle Busch 24th, Kaz Grella 25th, 26th for Brad Keselowski, Michael McDowell 27th, Daniel Hemrick 28th is the last car in the lead lap now after Josh Williams has gone to lap down again in 29th. 30th is Justin Haley, Zane Smith 31st, John Hunter Nemechek 32nd, Harrison Burton 33rd, Austin Dillon 34th, Corey LaJoy 35th. 36th for Christopher Bell, David Starr rounds out the 37 car field. Every driver still in this race that started, and again, the most laps led is still Kyle Larson with 87 laps led. Elliott led for 63 before Hamlin retakes the race lead for the first time after winning stage two. Take a quick ad break. Continue the live commentary coverage of the Cookout 400 at Martinsville on KRC. 30 likes away from our goal of 150. Be sure to hit that like button if you guys haven't done so yet at 120 at this point. And subscribe for more NASCAR content as well if you are new. Again, 27 subscribers shy of 5,000 coming into the stream here today. We could be there now. I really have no clue. Let me check real quick. So you can hear the birds outside my <laughs> apartment. 21. We are 21 subscribers away from 5,000. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if you guys haven't done so yet. Banner Speed Sports Network, thanks for tuning in. New viewer, appreciate you tuning in, man. Think Bowman can win. Bowman's up there. All the Hendrick cars have been top seven, top eight pretty much since the end of stage one today. Stays in contention, has a fast pit stop, he can most certainly be there. We'll take a quick ad break and then again continue our live commentary coverage of this race. RCR and myself at that particular point because everybody was mad that, that we were leaving and I didn't take a liking to uh, the three spinning me out so I just held on as long as I felt like I could right there without getting beat up um, <laughs> by the whole team uh, to, keep it, to keep it from making their pit stops you know, take off right there he was about to get lapped that was my whole goal was to make sure he didn't win so okay. I was just going to hold him oh. in his pit stall as long as I could Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thursday is a different episode from Tuesday. Who's guesting this week? Uh, we've got uh, old Yankees manager Joe Girardi on our show this week, so it'll be fun to talk about the start of baseball season, and he, he had a lot of great insight for me as I was going towards the end of my career on when the right time was. Wow, yeah, this huge hammer that you about got hit with. I did? Yeah. Oh. Right? Oh. That's the big hammer I speak of. That would have left a mark, Kevin. It probably would have. Oh, your truck looks a little worse for the wear there. Yeah, and that was his pit stall, so I was just trying to sit there long enough to where they couldn't make a pit stop and <laughs> make sure that they didn't win the race. But those are the emotions that, that come out. Not not anything that you're proud of, but happens. But you made your point. Yeah, I guess. I miss those days with you. You, you liked when I... I made a fool out of myself. No, I don't think so. I just think, you know, there's people that get mad, and then there's Kevin Harvick. It was awesome. <laughs> Legendary. Well, I haven't seen anybody matter in a long, long time than last Locking. Sunday by Martin Truex. But a week later, uh, the page has turned. We're at a different racetrack, different day, and here we go. And uh, Truex got a little off cycle on pit stop, so not part of the discussion right now. He's in 22nd as we watch Bubba Wallace, Kyle Larson, William Byron. We've seen these two have trouble before. Dayton cleared back all the way back to last week at the end of the race with uh, Bubba Wallace and Kyle Larson, and they're uh, they're getting back after it again as they're trying to get around Nemechek. Well, Let's see just how tough it is to get around even a lap car. Uh, you see Larson try to shove the 42 car out of the way right there. He didn't really appreciate the fact that he's just sitting in there racing in the middle of uh, himself and Bubba. That, that, that battle goes back to Las Vegas several years ago. 
it's it's been a battle for sure and honestly those cars i thought larson's a little bit better than wallace i'm super impressed with the the job that bubba wallace has done today he's been fast all weekend long was fast in practice qualifying been up from that top three all day long i still think bubba has one of the best really long run cars as we go deeper into this run this is about the time that we saw Kyle Larson start to fall off earlier uh, when Bubba Wallace almost passed him for the first stage win. And I think that very same thing's going to happen with this nine car, Chase Elliott. But I do I, I do not think that that Hamlin car is going to fall off. I think that car will I stay agree. steady, Eddie, and, and uh, they're going to handle, they're gonna need a caution. They're going to need pit stop, something to go uh, you know, out of the ordinary for that 11 car. Do but, not think on a long run if it's a... 30-plus lap run uh, from a strategy standpoint. So Denny Hamlin's going to keep charging hard and try to make sure he puts as many a lap down as possible and get as big a gap between him and second place as possible. Inside of 125 laps to go at Martinsville. How about an FS1 Sunday afternoon? Break it up. Yeah. Took the right side tires only during his last pit stop. I uh, still in 10th for right now. He fell outside the top 10 and then got back into the middle. We are, as far as green flag laps go, with the caution laps at the end of the last stage and then the uh, pit stop, obviously, that took place with that. And then the next I was a race car. So I think Blaney would have to be the first to pit at some point here. That could help him if we end up cycling all the way through, but if a caution comes out, he's going to get trapped a couple laps down. You definitely don't want to be the first to pit on a half-mile short track. And uh, although we haven't seen a lot of tire fall off today, I think where you're at on the track independency of where the other lap cars are at, we have seen about a second of a difference in lap time from where we're at right now and some of the fastest laps of the race that these drivers at the front of the field have ran. So there is a bit of a difference there. Expect if we get a caution for everybody to pit because, again, they're outside of uh, being able to make it on fuel to the end, but we are in the fuel window to make it to the end from here on out. Uh, also, hit that subscribe button. Again, we were only 19 subs shy of getting to 5,000 on the channel uh, prior to the last commercial break, so be sure to do so. And also hit the like button on the stream. Helps these streams out. It helps the channel out a lot as well. We're only 24 likes away from our goal of 150. So again, 150 likes is the goal. We're at 126 right now. We'll take another ad break. You're listening live on KRC to the Cookout 400 at Martinsville for the NASCAR Cup Series. A 1.8 second lead for Denny Hamlin over Chase Elliott in second place. Bubba Wallace is third. Kyle Larson fourth. William Byron fifth. Alex Bowman sixth. Joey Logano seventh. Chase Briscoe eighth. Todd Gillen ninth. And Ryan Blaney rounds out the top ten. And it's the top ten in the running order at this point with 112 laps to go at the paperclip in Martinsville, Virginia. 
And Virginia native Denny Hamlin trying to win two races in a row, three in the last four, all on short tracks of three-quarter mile in length or less. Toyota has not lost on a racetrack in one mile in length or less. Two Toyotas run top three. They've really been the only two Toyotas to run the top ten in the entirety of the second half of this race, that being the race leader Hamlin and then the third place driver Bubba Wallace. Wallace scored a lot of stage points today as he ended up qualifying second, finished second at the end of stage one, then ended up finishing third at the end of stage two and still runs third in this one. He was on the bubble uh, just barely inside the cutoff line of the playoff grid, just nine points to the good coming in, so as far as where uh, he is at right now, he could definitely blimp himself very close to, if not inside the top 10 in points after this race today, if things continue on the way they are looking right now, considering how compact the points still are with only being eight races into the season after this one uh, ends up finishing here today. Ryan Priest, after starting very deep in the field, has worked his way up into a battle for 12th place on the racetrack with... Uh, Tyler Reddick, it looks like, who spent a little bit of time at the beginning of the stage in the top 10, but seems to be fading on the long run just a little bit. Uh, Reddick going to be battling now with his teammate, uh, Toyota teammate, I should say, specifically of Eric Jones. And uh, I did get an alert on my phone, and they just uh, gave the score ticker at the bottom of the screen as well. But uh, congratulations to anybody who might have been watching the uh National Championship for Women's College Basketball. It was on at about the start of the race today. That has just finished. Uh, South Carolina is now the Women's Basketball National Champions in 2024. So congrats to them. Undefeated season, I believe, two years in a row. No, never mind. LSU won the championship last year. I, I think they were undefeated through the regular season two years in a row, but uh, they ran the table this year. So a little bit of a dynasty going on there. As far as this race goes, these teams do not want to make green flag pit stops. They can go quite a way still. I mean, they have ran about 100 laps. I would say anywhere the next 50 to 70 laps they can go on fuel. 70 at the very most. Haven't had a whole lot of caution laps to save a bunch of fuel. So I would probably say about 50 laps we'll see green flag pit stops. I doubt anybody's going to try to pit earlier unless it's Ryan Blaney or anybody else who might have taken two tires. I know Blaney is the only one that I know of off the top of my head that took two. And looking at the time spent on pit road during the second and most recent pit stop, I don't see anybody else that had less than a nine-second stop to indicate that they took two tires. So, yeah, I would say Blaney is definitely going to be the first into the pits. And maybe that draws more into the pits as well. And that could work out for Ryan Blaney. Uh, if he doesn't have a mistake and we don't have a caution... And although Blaney, I thought, was going to be the first to pit road, he is not. William Byron is in the pits. The box to have to make some decisions. So the cycle starts a little early. Ninth coming. Bob is coming. Here comes the five. Second, Jamie. third, and fourth. Well, it's the game of chicken, right? One comes, they're all coming. So William Byron, the first to peel off into his pit box, said they're going to leave the balance alone. Pretty happy with it as they put four tires on there. His teammate, Chase Elliott, led a good portion of this race, making his way on down pit road. Bubba Wallace from the third spot. We just talked about his last pit stop. We'll see how this works out for his crew. As the nine goes to work, no adjustments there for Chase Elliott. Four tires stop. Denny Hamlin as well peels off as he makes his way down. There's Bubba Wallace's crew. They're on that curve. This is the downside for the crew. Have to work a little bit harder. But that side, that's straight away. He has that opening right there so he can hammer down when he needs to. As you see, Kyle Larson came in. Four tires for him. Pretty good on his balance. Just stuck back in traffic. Denny Hamlin comes to a halt in his stall. Four tires and fuel. Alex Bowman, Josh Berry finishing up. Kyle Busch is in. Here's Joey Logano, Todd Gilliland, and more. You see Denny exiting. Here they come around here. I think the nine might get him, Kevin. Yeah, and coming coming out of the pits right there, it's really hard to get the front tires to turn. So Chase Elliott's got his car wound up. Side by side for the eventual race lead between Chase Elliott and Denny Hamlin following green flag pit stops. Elliott from second place pitting one lap before Hamlin could be the difference here. And the fire off speed, it has been better in the Hendrick cars than what it has been in the Toyotas. The long run speed in the Toyotas has been a bit better. And as a result, Chase Elliott back out in front of Denny Hamlin. Kyle Larson got uh, just out ahead of 
Bubba Wallace and William Byron, and Byron got out ahead of Wallace as a result of pitting even a lap before these guys. They have to hope that this stays green, though. They're all a lap down, and they're not even the first car a lap down. Daniel Hemrick is. Chase Briscoe and the rest of the top nine, now top ten drivers, still have to hit the pits. And I mentioned he could go about another 50 laps on fuel. I would not be shocked if all those drivers that are out on the track now run another 50 laps in hopes that there is a caution. Because if a yellow ends up coming out, it could definitely play huge favors for a lot of these underdogs at the tail end of the lead lap to trap the leaders a lap down. Uh, they would take the wave around to get back on the lead lap, but then they'll have fresher tires and have the track position, which would be a huge detriment to everybody else around here. Elliott nearly causing the caution as he gets into Stenhouse, who pinballs into the 42 of Nemechek. Nemechek did a great job keeping it off the outside wall. Elliott does maintain out in front of the field. His teammate William Byron is coming, though, and Byron is gotten by Hamlin. He is on the inside of Stenhouse. Stenhouse is holding up the 11 car as... Larson's going to try to use Stenhouse as a pick to get to third, the eventual third place. And he does. Hamlin continues to lose track position. This is not good for Denny. Struggling on this short run, as he has done today, but he hasn't lost this much track position on a short run since taking the lead the first time, right before the end of stage two. So the top three of those that came out of the pits is Elliott, Byron, Larson. The top five in the running order right now of a bunch of cars that still have not made their final pit stop. Chase Briscoe leads. Austin Sindrick is 9.7 seconds behind him in second. Daniel Suarez is 10 seconds off the lead in third. 10.1 uh, to be exact. Martrex Jr. in fourth is 11 seconds off the lead. And Noah Gregson in fifth is 11 and a half seconds back. So those are the top five. Uh, they still have to hit pit road, and again, the entire top nine still have to pit as well. These cars on the fresher tires are getting close to unlapping themselves, Elliott Byron and uh, many others, and they will unlap themselves actually this time by because the current race leader, Chase Briscoe, is going to decide to pit. So Briscoe, who was in the top ten, ran pretty long. This will give the race lead now to Austin Sindrick, and the top eight cars now in front of Elliott Byron Larson and many others still have to hit pit road and because that does give them their lap back that's not as much of an advantage for those that still have to end up hitting pit road so they may end up pitting a bit quicker than that 50 lap mark that they would have left on fuel to make it to the finish it's really the first time we've seen byron with any sort of track position he's working through the lap traffic much better than everybody else zane smith in the way of the leaders elliot had to check up off turn four or turn two rather and into turns three and four, Byron underneath him. Elliott gets a bit wide. Contact made. Elliott almost squeezed into the wall. This is a battle for the eventual race lead. Penalty for Josh Berry speeding on pit road, unfortunately, for the four team. He had been running back half of the top ten for most of the day. And now he is going to be back in the, uh, looks like he's in 30th right now as he takes his pass through penalty. Tough break for Josh Berry in the four. Had some speed once again, but Byron out ahead of Chase Elliott and everybody else, but there's a lot of lap traffic still in front of the 24 car. He may not get away for long. Larson has closed in on Elliott as well over the course of this short run. We'll see if Kyle Larson has a shot to get by the 9. 88 laps to go here at Martinsville. He was able to drive up ahead of his teammates and currently in eighth place. Well, that's one thing, winning a race puts you in a position to, to take chances and do things like that. And here at Martinsville, coming to pit road early is a big gamble because if the caution comes out or something happens, but they were the, the very first car on pit road and they are reaping the benefits. Noah Grixon has made his stop and now Cindric comes to pit road and gives up the lead to Daniel Suarez. Brad Keselowski is also in. So that will leave uh, just four cars in the uh, top half dozen that have not been to pit road. Suarez, Truex, Gibbs, and Grala. They're going to need a caution soon, very soon. Suarez and Truex, car length apart. This is for the lead. Zane spins to the inside. Trying to get 
a lap back here. One of the three that he is down in the 71. Yeah, the tough part, like we've talked some of the other weeks, for a, for a car like Martin Truex Jr. is having to get out of the way for the lap cars and running that outside lane and not not being in the part of the racetrack that you have to be in to make the, the amount of lap time that you need uh, with the old tires. So it just gets, it, the, the problem kind of gets compounded as you, as you run long. Ty Gibbs has made a stop. And now Michael McDowell peels off and heads for the road. We're going to take the box side by side, but don't worry. If they make pit stops, you won't miss it. 83 laps to go at the Martinsville Speedway. Top five in the running order. Daniel Suarez lead still has to hit pit road. Martin Truex Jr. six tenths of a second behind him in second. Also still has to hit pit road for the final time. William Byron leads. He's the first of those that just pitted after lap 300. Chase Elliott in fourth. Kyle Larson rounds out. Uh, in fifth, and again, those three have pitted. The only drivers that still overall have to hit pit row would be Suarez, Truex, and Gruala. Uh, nobody else still has to hit pit row, and everybody has made their final stop under green flag conditions. Those three hoping uh, that they can last long enough that we get a caution and maybe can uh, split the strategy up and have a shot at a better finish or a win that way, but that is their only chance. Uh, as of right now, still, Kyle Larson has led the most laps of the race with five, uh, 87 laps led for the five car. Most of them, obviously, back at stage one, where he won the first stage leading every lap, all 80. Elliott still led eight laps during the screen flag cycling, and that's where most of the lead changes have come in, but we did have several lead changes before that. Um, this is honestly, I'd say the next-gen era, this is the best Martinsville spring race so far, I will say. Um... A lot less boring in this race, I'd say, than what the last two were when Larson dominated the last year and the Byron the year before. There's some racing going on. And I think some of that has to do with the track temps being a lot warmer during the day because we'd seen good races here in the fall the last couple of years at Martinsville. So I think that definitely helps with a slightly slicker racetrack with these cars that just overall have more grip with the next gen on these shorter tracks and road courses. So uh, pretty good one going thus far. Be sure to hit the like button if you guys haven't done so yet. We're 19 likes away from our goal of 150. Again, 19 away from 150. So be sure to do that if you haven't yet. Uh, Tin, Man, Tin Man Dallas, thanks for tuning in. Late, who won the first two stages? Uh, Kyle Larson won stage one from the pole. Denny Hamlin won stage two. Stayed on the racetrack. Suarez is the leader. But William Byron, Chase Elliott, and Kyle Larson have now passed Truex, bumping him back to fifth spot. But Larry, those two, Suarez and Truex, how long can they run? Yeah, they can go to about 20 to 30 to go on fuel. So they still can go another probably 40 to 50 laps. And honestly, I think they're past the point of no return. They're committed now. Yeah, you're laughing at the big man. I'll tell you what. Kyle Busch is giving William Byron fits, trying to stay on that lead lap. And there, William Byron is passing Suarez for the lead. So Byron, the first to pit in this green flag cycle, passes Daniel Suarez, one of the last two drivers on the racetrack, who have not pitted. And that completes the cycle. Still 74 to go. Got to save those tires, save the temperature in them. You can do that with the brakes. It needs to get out of from this lap traffic. He wants that clean air so he can go back to managing this program. Kyle Busch in the eighth. Last car on the lead lap in 21st place. Hard to manage anything when you're in that traffic that hard, aren't you, hey, Kevin? Well, you, you have to. Let's look at the, the cycle here and, and William Byron being able to Hit first, put him from fifth to first. Bubba Wallace went from third to seventh. I so. think he was the biggest loser in all yeah, of that. I would agree. I mean, obviously, Denny Hamlin lost it from first to fifth, but uh, that car he on Bubba Wallace was, was certainly uh, didn't fare well in that pit stop. One, two, three. <laughs> the Hendrick cars are the ones that won that pit stop big time. And I think Rudy Frugal, he leads the charge in that. Great heads up call by being the first one on pit road, put his driver in the catbird seat. 
great interview of Rick Hendrick by Chris Myers in the pre-race talking about Martinsville Speedway where they got their first win in 84 with Jeff Bodine. The 100th win for Hendrick came in Michigan. Jimmy Johnson at Darlington for win number 200 and William Byron at Texas last September win number 300 for NASCAR's winningest team in history at the quarter sports. Celebrating 40 years, their Ruby anniversary here today. There are 28 wins here, more than any other team at any track in NASCAR. Obviously, William Byron still struggling to get by Kyle Busch. Kyle's doing everything he can do to stay on the lead lap, but finally gives in and lets William Byron get by. You can see him still waving that blue flag. You might as well save your energy with that blue flag at this place, as hard as it is to pass. He knows. He's trying to stay. Now, it's not only he's in the lead uh, lucky dog spot, so he has to work hard to stay there. As he let, puts a car down, he's got to go with him, fill that hole. Daniel Hemrick going one lap down. That'll leave 18 cars on the lead lap as Jeff Gordon looks on. Larry? Yeah, we got a little race trend for Martinsville. The four races with the Gen 7 car, 2022-2023, and we are there now. The average of the last caution, lap 333, 67 laps to go. We did have an overtime finish two years ago. Remember this, though. Our first overtime finish of 2024, last week at Richmond. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. That advantage that William Byron got by pitting first and using those fresh tires to uh, get him the lead now by eight tenths of a second over his teammate, Chase Elliott. Jamie? I talked to you. Rudy Fugel this morning, Richie for William Byron. There he is right there. He's been walking in this morning. It just felt different. You look around and saw Hendrick Motorsports here and everywhere. He wants this win bad, but he knew they had an uphill climb. They qualified 18th. That's time for the worst effort of the year. But they had a fast race car, a good call to get his driver out front. Now they're sitting in the captain's seat looking at their third win of the season. You've got to be a little careful when you get to these big anniversary wins. I think it was approaching the 300th Hendrick win when here at Martinsville, Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson took each other out, fighting too hard to be the one to score that win for Rick Hendrick. Watch this. This was all but a caution right here. Chris go hard into the bump roof. You can't really see it from that bumper cam how sideways he was, but he was looking at the infield. That was uh, Ty Gibbs. Yeah. Gibbs now one lap down. Yeah, Chase Briscoe just moved up to ninth. He's had a good car. I'm sure he's frustrated. They had a little bit of trouble on pit road and lost a few spots and have never really made those spots back up. So three Chevys lead two Fords. Uh, excuse me, lead two Toyotas, then Blaney's Ford, Bowman Chevy, and then three Fords to round out the top ten. Ford's still looking for their first victory this season. I heard you say the name Blaney, and I haven't really heard anything good out of that until that. I look over my shoulder, he's in sixth. That's pretty typical for Ryan Blaney. He's yep. a grinder. Regan? Looks like that's exactly what they have done all day long is grinded. That car at one point was plowing tight earlier on. They've continued to make adjustments, of course, had that extra pit stop early on that cost them all that track position. More recently, though, just needed a little bit of security in that race car on the exit. He's been quiet since the green flag stop a minute ago. Daniel Suarez completes his pit stop finally on the green. Uh, that leaves only Kaz Grala in 14th place, who has not stopped under this uh, green flag cycle. But one thing to think about is fatigue. These long runs, all this shifting, all the pressure that you have to have on the brake pedal, these guys are getting tired. It's a lot of work. 57 laps to go. Hendrick Motorsports in the top three spots out front as we take you Fox side by side.
We'll go through the full field running order one more time in this one with 56 laps to go. Again, a one and a half second lead for William Byron over his teammates at Hendrick Motorsports of Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson. Elliott in second, Larson third. Denny Hamlin sits in fourth, Bubba Wallace fifth, Ryan Blaney in sixth, Alex Bowman seventh, eighth place for Joey Logano, ninth is Chase Briscoe, Todd Gillilan in tenth. Tyler Reddick in 11th, Eric Jones is 12th, 13th for Ryan Priest, Ross Chastain 14th, Chris Buescher 15th, Kaz Grala 16th, Carson Hosevar in 17th place is the last car in the lead lap. Kyle Busch in 18th, first car one lap down, Austin Sindrick 19th, Noah Gregson 20th, Ty Gibbs 21st, Martin Truex Jr. 22nd, Brad Keselowski 23rd, Michael McDowell 24th, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is 25th. 26 for Daniel Suarez, Josh Ferry, 27th, Daniel Hemrick, 28th, Justin Haley, 29th, Josh Williams, 30th. John Hunter Nemechek, 31st, Zane Smith, 32nd, Corey LaJoy, 33rd, Harrison Burton, 34th, Austin Dillon, 35th, 36th for Christopher Bell, David Starr, 37th. Uh, it seemed to have pulled off the racetrack and out of the race a while back as he's 37 laps down now. Uh, he's the only driver out of the race so far, everybody else still in it. Again, 16 cars now in the lead lap as the last couple have just pitted. Uh, Kaz Grella just came to pit road, and then I think somebody else ended up pulling a lap down in the midst of that. So 16 cars on the lead lap. Still a second and a half lead, though, for Byron over Elliott. And then a quick update again on the laps led department. Uh, most laps led is Kyle Larson with 87 laps led. If Byron leads every lap from now to the end of the race, he still won't catch Larson for the most laps led. So uh, Kyle Larson has led the most so far today. Joey Logano has led three laps less than him with 84. Denny Hamlin with 66 laps led, Chase Elliott with 63 laps led, and then again Byron with 23 laps led and counting. During green flag pit stops, Daniel Suarez led for 13 laps, Chase Briscoe for 8, and Austin Sindrick for 6. That makes up 8 different drivers who've led at least one lap in this race today, and amongst those 8 different drivers to lead a lap, we are sitting at 11 lead changes during the course of this 400 lap race at Martinsville. Four cautions total, two for incident, both for Bell. Uh, one was Debris back in stage two at lap 112. Lap 202 was Bell's spin early in stage three. That was the only stage three caution. And the two stage breaks at lap 180 and lap 80, stages one and two. If we go green to the end, this will be around a 190 lap green flag run to the finish. And what has been a very quick race today with the lack of cautions, the 100 last laps less in length as well for this one compared to previous spring races at Martinsville. Be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe for more NASCAR content if you haven't yet. Uh, we are at 136 likes. Our goal is 150, so be sure to hit that like button if you guys haven't done so, so we get to our goal of 150 likes before the end of the stream. 47 to go again. And we will continue the live commentary coverage on the other side. We'll take our final ad break of this one. You're listening live on KRC. So William Byron leads, extending it now to just over two seconds. During the commercial break, Ryan Blaney passed Bubba Wallace for fifth on the racetrack. And has closed in to within a second of Denny Hamlin. Kyle Larson within a half a second of Chase Elliott. And I think lap traffic could be holding these guys up. I mean, it's consistently a tenth or two quicker a lap for Byron compared to everybody else uh, just behind him in the running order. Byron was the fastest car in the racetrack that last lap. Ryan Blaney in fifth, though, the second fastest car in the racetrack that last lap. 44 to go and counting down. We'll obviously see if it stays green to the end as well, because that's not a guarantee by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> Now these races work out. We've only had one overtime finish this year, and that was actually last week at Richmond. It's first overtime finish for the Cup Series. 2.7 to 2.8 second lead. Byron's riding off into the sunset. Kind of similar to one Blaney won here last season where he kind of took the lead uh, in the later portion of the race. It was a little bit later than what Byron took the lead here today, but took the lead with about 40, 50 to go. Kind of ran off with it. Had a long green flight run both before the pass for the lead and then obviously uh after that and 
the finish of this race almost looking identical, really. Yeah, Blaney definitely closing up to Elliott Larson Hamlin in front of him, but nobody's catching Byron right now. 40 laps to go this time by here in Martinsville, Virginia. Yeah, and you can see Chris moves around a lot in his seat as he hits the brake, goes way forward. On board with Ty Gibbs. It just seems like a pain to have to do it. I, I wish, I told him this yesterday, I wish we could do away with shifting, especially at a track like Martinsville. I don't know how to do it, I don't have all the answers, but I know that it would change the way these guys, you know, keep their momentum. That tight car would be tighter, won't respond to the throttle up off the corner because of the affordability of the shift. There's a lot of differences there that it would make in the overall outcome of this race. In my opinion, everybody's got one, right? That's right. William Byron with a three-second lead. Hendrick, one, two, three. This is the 151st Cup race at Martinsville, and no single team has ever finished one, two, three here. Wow. Well, if there's any team that can, that can do that, it would be Hendrick Motorsports. And, and obviously, they have probably... They always put a lot of effort in every week, but everybody knows how important this weekend is to them. And if there's anybody can be a thorn in your ear, it's Dee Hamlin. <laughs> he can break that little uh, celebration party away, and he's right there for the taking. Now, Austin Simrick's on fresher tires, uh, and there's Hamlin, and here comes Blaney right after him. So Hamlin uh, can't wait around, but is he really quicker than Simrick? Let's see. Well, he's frustrated with him. You saw him get two really big shots, but we see Ryan Blaney has caught Denny Hamlin. And he, we said it. I mean, he's definitely the fastest car on the track, Ryan Blaney, taking advantage of, of Hamlin being door-to-door -door with Cindric right there, his teammate. Can he try to run in on the outside, do a crossover right here? That's what he's looking for. He's going to stay on the outside. Cindric lap down in 18th. Can Denny run him up the racetrack? Yeah, I'm sure Denny thinks that this is probably uh, a lot harder than it needs to be, but it's the way it goes. Oh, big shot by Denny Hamlin. Do you have to. You oh, Josh Berry off the curb up into Ricky Stenhouse. Well, Cindric's tires are 15 laps fresher uh, than Hamlin's. So I think Berry and Stenhouse, that isn't over yet down here. Stenhouse repeated the favor, getting into one. They're still door to door down the back stretch. 30 laps to go, about the time all those frustrations come out and payoffs and paybacks become the order of the day as we get to the closing stages here. A lot of green flag runs here. If I'm the leader, I don't want to say it, but it sure seems like we've been around here a long time. 1984, Rick Hendricks' unsponsored all-star racing Chevrolet with Jeff Bodine at the wheel. They won the race. Uh, they picked up a sponsor. The rest is history. Sounds like a movie. Well, Harry Hyde certainly made that movie. There was a lot of uh, a lot of that group in Days of Thunder, wasn't it? It almost was the Harry Hyde story. And the way that happened was during the filming of Days of Thunder, Harry Hyde was a consultant to the film crew. So during breaks in the shooting, he would sit and tell racing stories. And the movie writers, they were copying it all down, put a lot of it into the movie as it really happened. For Robert Duvall, as your character, you're, you did something right. That was couldn't have been a better awesome human being to be your character. It tells a lot about you. Well, the detriment of uh, a lot of the cars that uh, have been leading today is not being able to get through traffic. William Byron started, I think, 18th in this race and, and was able to get through traffic, and a great pit call put him in the lead. But catching all these lap cars towards the end of this race, William has done a pretty good job of being able to maneuver and get through traffic. He's got a huge gap to second place with Chase Elliott. 
He drove off from him. You spot on there, Kevin. Well, we saw Chase Elliott earlier have a little bit of a struggle in traffic, and that's when Denny Hamlin got by him. But Denny Hamlin has not been as good this round as he, as he has been the rest of the race. Well, next week we go to the big track in the big state on FS1. We're battling in Texas at Texas Motor Speedway. Free race kicks things off at 2 Eastern. Green flag at 3 next Sunday on FS1. 26 laps to go in this NASCAR Cup Series event at Martinsville. William Byron still in the race lead, 2.8 seconds ahead of Elliott. Uh, Chase Elliott there a couple laps in a row was about a tenth quicker, but that was about at. Uh, that was about it, excuse me. Um, William Byron, though, right now stuck behind Chris Busher, who is the last car in the lead lap, and he's been behind him for quite some time. That might be part of the reason why Elliott ran those couple laps slightly quicker than Byron. Byron, definitely the quickest car on the racetrack, even though Blaney was getting track time. Uh, obviously, he's six seconds off the race lead, but he was pretty much just kind of in the open traffic until he ended up catching Bowman, passed him. Uh, I think he passed his teammate Logano during the screen flag run, as well as Bubba Wallace uh, about 20 to 30 laps ago as well. Was getting close to Hamlin, and Hamlin was stuck behind Cindric. I think Hamlin finally passed him now because Hamlin's been about a tenth quicker lap than Blaney. Uh, we obviously know that the 11 car has had a lot of pace. It seems like Hamlin has had probably the best long run pace today. I'm not going to say Cinder kept Hamlin for winning. I think Hamlin losing too much ground in the short run after everybody came off pit roads, what ultimately has costed him because he was uh, side by side with Elliott at the time coming out of the pits for that uh, eventual race lead when they were still obviously outside the top 10 in the cycling of pit stops. They were the first of cars that hit pit road. Uh, but uh, not only Elliott got around him, but Byron got around him, then Larson got around him, and then during the midst of that, Byron was able to somehow get around Chase Elliott and uh, drive away from him, really showing the speed that it looked like he had early in the race when in Stage 1 he went from 16th to 8th in the first 80 laps that were caution-free. And then we just kind of stopped talking about Byron there throughout most of this race because he was mired between really 5th and 8th the rest of Stage 2 early into Stage 3. He was the first car to hit pit road that had cycled him up in front of Bubba Wallace, up in front of Kyle Larson, and right behind Hamlin and Elliott who were side-by-side -side. once Elliott got around Hamlin that made an easy pass for Byron to get around Hamlin and then Larson obviously to get by Denny as well that's why Denny ended up behind them but then also to add in again during lap traffic got through the lap cars better than Elliott got alongside of him made the pass now in this point in the race 19 laps to go does Elliott have anything for Byron by way of race pace I don't think anybody has it but because of how hard it is to pass lap cars here at Martinsville Speedway and Busher not wanting to go a lap down to the end of this stage in case we do get a caution. He can pick up more spots on a restart. Can't do that if he's going to be the first car lap down. Byron's lead from 2.8 to 2.9 seconds just about five laps ago is now down to 2.1 seconds. And Elliott consistently is about a tenth or two quicker a lap as a result of not having lap traffic in front of the nine. And unfortunately... For the 24 of Byron, again, he is right on the back bumper of the 17, and it doesn't get much better than that. Ross Chastain is the next car in front of Busher, and then there's a couple of cars side by side. It looked like uh, Ryan Priest tried to pass Zane Smith. Smith already a lap down, but uh, Priest is not in 13th on the lead lap. So we know Chastain's going to be very difficult to pass, even if Byron gets by Busher. And he needs to get by him quick because Elliott is going to get to the back bumper of the 24 if Byron waits too long to pass the 17 in the 1. He's working by Busher, finally going to get around him, and I think Busher might have just let him go at that point. Getting out of the leader's way. Byron getting a little loose off turn 4, but he has cleared him. A 1.8 second lead now, and at least a one lap card um, difference in between the 24 and the 9. Larson within 2.5 seconds of third place as well in about a two and a half second difference between Larson and Hamlin again Hamlin lost a lot of time being stuck behind Sindrick Hamlin has pulled away at about nine tenths of a second ahead of Ryan Blaney in fifth once he got by that lap car this is going to be like the fourth quiet well the third quiet top five for Blaney this season will end up being tied for the most top fives this year um I believe with Larson at four but he's kind of finishing, I mean, obviously he's not getting any wins with it, but it's one of those days like at Phoenix and like at Vegas where Blaney wasn't really in the top 10 early. 
they were able to get the car better. And by the final stage on a long green flag run, he drove up into the top five. That's exactly what happened those races. And that's what's happening here on about 190 lap green flag run and a cycling of pit stops in the midst of that uh, to the end of the race. Byron has caught Chastain. He's right behind him, trying to find a way around him now. Working the outside, back to the bottom. It almost looked like Chastain took his line away here, and this might make things interesting for any Elliott fans out there. Watching to the very end is what he needs. Side-by-side -side lap traffic in front of Chastain as well. Uh, looks like Nemechek and Zane Smith are battling side-by-side, -side, so those cars are both one lap down, but they're holding Chastain up. Chase Elliott just has to get by the 17 and the 4, it looks like, and then he will be there. It looks like Kyle Busch is also between them, so three lap cars between the top two. Byron is stuck right now in heavy lap traffic, and again, that 2.8 to 2.9 second lead he had with 25 to go is down under a second and a half with 11 laps remaining. Looking to make things interesting here down the stretch. Those two cars are still side by side. They've been side by side, Zane Smith and John Hunter Nemechek, for quite some time. Really, the entirety of this like 25 laps to go to 10 lap to go stretch. Elliott tried something different to get out of the dirty air of Kyle Busch in the line of cars in front of him. Went to the outside lane through three and four. Didn't really pick up in the lap time side of things. He was actually five hundredths of a second slower than Byron the last lap. Byron to the back bumper of Chastain. Puts the bumper to him. Moves him up out of the groove. Byron to the inside of the one. The one still on the outside and still pushing strong. Nine laps to go for Byron. Can he clear this time into turns one and two? He does. And Chastain might have gotten out of the gas there and finally let him through once he was about clear. The lead had gotten down to a second and a half. Elliott's still stuck behind Bush, though. And now there's four lap cars between the top two. So although the interval has gotten closer, a lot more cars between them. And this is going to be better for Byron now as he's down to just eight laps to go. Just looking for this race to stay green to the end. And it should be an easy one, two, three finish for Hendrick Motorsports. If it stays green, because that gap between Larson and Hamlin is still two seconds, and Larson hasn't even caught Elliott quite yet uh, in the midst of the lap traffic. But I think there's a better chance that Larson takes second away from Elliott. Much better chance of that happening than Elliott getting by the lap cars he has in between him and Byron and challenging Byron here in the late going. Because now Larson is within about a four-tenth of a second gap between him and Elliott. Blaney hasn't closed that gap down on Hamlin since getting by Cindric. In fact, it's about a second difference between those two cars now. Six laps to go. And again, Larson and Elliott, there's no lap cars between those two either. Byron passes another lapper of Zane Smith. Two-second lead again for Willie B. And after Nemechek, he's got clean air in front of him down to five laps to go. Larson within three-tenths of a second of Elliott for P2. Every point matters, especially with Larson battling for that regular season championship here early in the season uh, with Truex. He came in 14 points behind him. Truex is well outside the top 10 and 20th. Larson with a lot of stage points, a stage win today as well. There's a very good chance it looks like Kyle Larson is going to be the points leader again following Martinsville today after this eighth race of the season. Byron going to get by Nemechek. Three to go at the line. No more lap traffic that the 24 is going to catch. Side-by-side -side lap cars, though, right in front of Chase Elliott. Larson within a couple tenths of Chase. Just under three tenths of a second behind him at the line the last time by. Oh, the caution light is on. Nemechek is up against the wall. With three laps to go, the yellow flag is out. And we are headed to NASCAR overtime. Big fire underneath the right front. I, I almost wonder if the brakes gave out on the 42, the way he was wall riding through the corner. I still feel good about Hendrick Motorsports winning this race, but I don't know if it's going to be Byron necessarily. Elliott's been good on the restarts today. Huge fire underneath the right front. I think the brakes exploded on the 42. He was right behind Byron. He just passed him, and he tried to keep it against the wall. He probably felt that the, the brakes were going out on that race car. Unbelievable.
Well, for the second straight week, we have NASCAR overtime on a short track. Went the first six races without having any overtime finishes, including two super speedways nonetheless. And now back-to-back -back weeks, we'll have it on a short track. And, yeah, that is a huge fire underneath the 42. He needs to get out of that thing. Big flames. Definitely looked like a brake failure. Unbelievable. Also, real quick, be sure to hit the like button if you guys haven't done so yet. Again, our goal was 150 likes for the stream. Subscribe. We're less than 20 away from 5,000 as well. See if we can get the 5,000 subscribers on the channel here before the end of this stream. And, uh, again, the like button goal was 150. Got to refresh the page here, see where we're at. Uh, we are at 139, 11 more likes, ladies and gentlemen. We got over 150 watching. Be sure to hit the like button and be sure to subscribe again. If you are new, we are less than 20 likes away, or 20 subscribers away from 5,000. Two lap overtime shootout upcoming. It's going to be, I think he's saying his hair is standing up on his arms. And the way everybody races here, who's to say there's only going to be one race start? Oh, well, with these next gen cars, it, they're just so tough that you can... You can do a lot of pushing, and you can do a lot of shoving, and those noses and, and tails are still going to be fine. So uh, this is going to get as physical of any race that we've seen so far. The bad news is for William Byron, your leader, the cost have come out with three laps to go. The good news is if you're Rick Hendrick, because all three of your cars are running one, two, three, you've got three shots at this. Well, they're using code. Chris Gabehart just told Denny Hamlin, quarter pounder, he says, I don't have that code on my dash. What is that? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was calling in his lunch, Eddie, his Eddie lunch Eddie. order. I don't know. All right, let's talk about the restart. I know we're going to have pit stops here, but, you know, last week, the last restart at Richmond was the subject of controversy all week long. Martin Truex had dominated the race. Did he deserve to win it? Yeah, he probably did. Uh, did Denny Hamlin get away with one? Yeah, he probably did. But... I had a long talk with Alton Sawyer this morning, NASCAR's senior VP of competition. We talked about the restart zone as being like a strike zone in baseball. There's ball and strike calls. It's a bang-bang call, he said. There, Hamlin is throttled up. And here, before the zone starts, so is Truex. And they ended up even down in turn number one. So NASCAR made the call quickly reviewed the call, said it was good, and raced on. We inquired, was the call under further review? They said no. Ball and strike call, but uh, Elton told me this morning, he said, if we see something egregious, we will react accordingly. Here's some Denny Hamlin radio. I mean, green light checker is just going to be bumper car for two laps, right? I mean, what the hell is tire people going to do? Just for That's a good question. Well, that that's true, and it is going to be bumper cars because everybody's going to want to do everything that they can to put themselves in position. I wouldn't to pit. Win the race, and if it means shove two guys in front of you, I don't no know chance I do. pit. Well, he's got the afforded ability to watch these other guys. He's probably going to do something the opposite of what they do. Byron pits in there, you darn right. Chris it's only Gabriel 13 says, cars on the lead lap. They do what they don't. Now they're still cleaning up from the fire under the right front of uh, John Hunter Nemechek's car, which is now being towed off to the garage. So dirt road will be closed for uh, at least one more lap here. Well, if those three Hinder cars are all in the same strategy, that's that's two rows. They, uh, you should stay out, the right? There's no, the there's no way you pit here. here. So that's, it's only two laps. It's like Larry said. If you're in the top five, it is very foolish to pit. I mean, if you're at the tail end of the lead lap, you might as well go for it. But there's only two laps. You're, like, maybe going to get a couple positions out of it. Passing has been hard to come by. We saw how well Logano and Blaney did on just two tires earlier. I would imagine. I mean, the only way you would lose this race by not pitting is if, like, all but the first couple don't pit. Even if the top three all Hendrick cars stay out and the rest pit behind them, I don't see them... I don't see them getting beat. Not all of them, at least. Maybe one or two of them might fall through the field a little bit those last two laps. But I think they can work together as a team and get one of them the victory here. That's just my take on it. Let's just make something clear. That's a replica of the grandfather clock. That one's a little bit beat up, Clint. Look at that thing. 
I hate to say this. Looks like it's run a few laps here. Yeah. It's been bolted down. Yeah, they come. I ain't too sure. They come in a box. They, yeah, they, they, Reagan's they old man together. has that. I, that one looks like the original right there. All right, so it is still a Ridgeway <laughs> clock, uh, even though Howard Miller, a big clockmaker in Zeeland, Michigan, bought Ridgeway nearly 20 years ago. They kept making clocks in Ridgeway until finally the plant closed. Now they're made in Michigan, but it's still a Ridgeway clock uh, that goes to the winner. He didn't know that either, did he, Kevin? No, I did not, but it's still one of the most unique trophies in NASCAR, and everybody yes. in this field wants one. Nor do I know where Zeeland, Michigan is. See, I think this is the model that we got right here, Kevin. I think this <laughs> is... I don't know what happened. Uh, let me show you. I've got, I've got that one. Got that one. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that one. Look at this one from the '80s. The '80s model right here. Right, huh? that, come on, that adds from about 1973. Yeah. I don't know. That one looks like an '80s <laughs> model. Like, I'm so nervous. I'm just making stuff up up here. I am nervous for everybody involved in this equation. There's a lot of decisions being made. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this happened. Uh, big hats off to our Fox Sports crew. Our cameramen, our tape operators, everybody who's involved in putting this show on. And congratulations to the weekend's winners, Christian Eckes in Trucks, Eric Almarola in the Xfinity Series, and on FS1, John Forrest won last night. Hey, how about that? 74 years and 11 months, and he's made it to the semifinal round today. My hero, on fire out Excuse there. Me. Hey. I want to bring something up here. There is a tremendous amount of cars between your first place car, William Byron, and your second place car, Chase Elliott. Rudy Fugel has a decision to make. They're all going to be able to watch him way before then. The pressure is on Rudy Fugel. What do you do? Don't do pit. Don't pit. Rudy's smart enough, right? I'm a Blaney fan, but man, don't pit. It's just foolish. It's not going to work. Pit road open? I don't think no. Red light's still on him. Ah, yeah, pit road's on red. Don't pit. No, it's not. Is it green? Danny Hamlin's pitting. No, Hamlin pitted. Oh, oh you. Stayed out right there. I think Danny Hamlin's in trouble. Why? I know they have a win, but why? Hamlin, three other cars in the back of the pack are pitting, Jamie. Well, we listened to that radio on the 11. It sounded like they didn't want to pit, that there was no point in pitting. But here they are coming down for their last stop of the day as they jack the right side. Clear tear off. This will be an interesting strategy call to see how much ground the 11 can make up. Five time winner here at Martinsville. They know how to get it done. I don't know if there's enough time, though, Mike. So Tyler Reddick, Eric Jones, and Ryan Priest all on the lead lap, all pitted. Yeah. A lot of rolling around here under caution. Clean these tires up. All you guys on old, old, old tires. You see William Byron scrubbing them things in. All that rubber that we were talking about got picked up like a vacuum. What vacuum What was? It was these race cars. <laughs> I can't yeah, believe Hamlin pitted this, from four. The tires that, that picked it up off the racetrack. So uh, we've seen William Byron warming up his tires really since. And if he didn't, if he did pit, they were only going to put two tires on to keep those left sides clean. So now six of the lap down cars are pivoting. I think they thought some more cars were going to pit there. I mean, they just Way gave back. up, like, what, eight spots? Well, it's still going to be a race between the cars up front. Hamlin will restart 10th. Yeah, the, the cars up front that, that didn't pit, you still have that opportunity to push and shove. But for William Byron's sake, he knows that Kyle Larson's probably not going to shove as hard as it would if it was somebody else not on his team. <laughs> for my first days in a car, Kevin, alongside a few, what did they tell you? I don't care what you do. Don't wreck yourselves. Yeah. Do not take this win from our company. So Denny Hamlin was told on the radio, if any of the Hendrick cars pit, stay out. They didn't. He did the opposite. He came in. Do what they don't. Somebody there was right over the choose me. That's because we're not choosing yet. Okay. Yeah, the lap cars are, are dropping back, so the, the lead lap cars are uh, catching up and lining themselves up in front of the lap down cars that did not pit. Will this be? I mean, it's obviously an overtime. And you said it, Mike. Will it be only one? I, who knows? There's a lot going to happen here. Cautions, breed cautions. I really thought that this equation would be shook up a lot farther than this. Well, it's still going to be really difficult to get going. 
the cars are up front that, that did not pit are not going to feel very good. And things are going to take off headed north when you're trying to go the other way down here in turn one. Have to be ready for it. They're all going to be that Hamlin's way. in 10th now. The he was 4th. He lost 6 positions. The best thing the three Hendrick Chevys up front have going for them is that the six cars right behind them did not pit either. You have a big gap back to Hamlin with four fresh tires. It will restart. Well, right now he's 10th. We'll see how the choose goes. Such a huge turnaround for Ryan Blaney in that 12 car. They have been all over the place in this racetrack today. Yeah, and if Chase Elliott can stay close on this restart on the outside and keep William Byron from making the exit of that corner, he's going to have a shot at this thing. But it's all going to talk um, happen on the takeoff here on restart and how he can get into turn one and, stay, and how far he can stay up beside William Byron. There has been a tremendous amount of rubber picked up. It's all on these tires. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to get them tires cleaned up, get some temperature back in them, spin them, do everything you can do, clean these babies up. John Hunter Nemechek checked and released at the Infield Care Center. So the front row is Byron and Elliott. Kyle Larson is third in the stealing seat, and he is right alongside Ryan Blaney, the first non Hendrick car in the race. You said it. All right, here we go. Two laps. First attempt at an overtime restart. Top nine. Stay out of the pits, and we only had four, five cars on the lead lap that ended up hitting pit road. Hendrick Motorsports trying to go for a win on their 40th anniversary of their first win. Green flag is in the air. It's Byron and Elliott on the front row. Larson might have spun the tires on the inside of row two. Blaney's on the outside of row two. Could not get clear of Larson. Door to door for the lead between the 24 and the 9. The 9 slips the rear tires a little bit off turn two. Byron is clear. Well, he tried to nudge him out of the way. He does try. He's not going to be able to get him all the way out of the groove quite yet. One lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Byron is leading. Elliott hasn't won since 2022. He's going to charge hard on the outside. Slips up the racetrack just a little bit more. Loses a lot of grip off the exit of turn two. Larson's underneath them now. As they work their way through three and four, it is going to be William Byron getting the win. And Kyle Larson brings it home second. Chase Elliott third. Still a 1-2-3 finish for Hendrick Motorsports. One, two, three, finish for Hendrick Motorsports. William Byron wins by a half a second margin of victory over Kyle Larson in second. Chase Elliott ends up third. Bubba Wallace fourth. Ryan Blaney rounds out the top five. You'll get to hear from the top finishers from today's race. I can't believe Hamlin pitted. I mean, <laughs> he finished 11th. He finished 11th. He was in 4th. That is unbelievable. I, I can't believe he did that. That's got to be up there with one of the dumbest things I've seen this season. I mean, that that's unbelievable. But how about that, though? 1-2-3 finish for Hendrick Motorsports. Dominated this final really green flag run from about 100 to go on down. Victory lap here for Byron and around the Martinsville Speedway. All the Hendrick fans on the backstretch, and Byron's going to burn it down there, too, just for them. Kind of like a party porch up there for Hendrick. Here's Jeff Gordon with Regan Smith. You just can't script it any better. But first, I just want to say hi to Mr. and Mrs. Hendrick. I know how bummed they were not to be here, but how excited they are that all of our folks are here to be able to see this happen. I mean, you just you can't script it like this. I knew we had good race cars when they showed up here yesterday, but the, the race, the way it played out to get, you know, that, that green flag stop was it. Our cars were just so good on the short runs. We just need to get that track position. And then that last race, oh, my God, I don't want to see that. <laughs> uh, and then I just was so hoping we could get the one, two, three. And I'm just, you know, these guys, uh, these, these three guys as well as Bowman, I mean, they just drove their butts off. Great race, but how about that? That William Byron, that 24 car. Every time we have a milestone day or opportunity or or, or moment, he steps up and uh, you know he got number 300. And this is this is going to be a huge win for him and, and the whole organization. Thank you. Congrats, Jeff. Enjoy the celebration. The 
nine drivers have now counted for Hendrick Motorsports' 29 victories at Martinsville, the most by an organization at any single track. The 26-year-old from Charlotte, North Carolina, celebrates his 13th career NASCAR Cup win. Jamie. He said I was happy yesterday with this race car. This pit crew got it done. William wants to get that checkered flag. William, the celebration all weekend long for Hendrick Motorsports' 40th anniversary. You get the job done. You're the one standing here. What does it mean to you, to Rudy, and this entire team? Yeah, I just uh, I just want to thank Chase for racing me clean there. It could get really physical at the end, and, uh, you know, he gave me a shot, which is expected, but uh, we all finished it off. So just uh, so proud of everyone at Hendrick Motorsports. Um, grew up a big Hendrick fan, and uh, to be here for the 40th anniversary and all that goes into just this organization, all the people, it's all about the people, and just want to thank Mr. Hendrick and, and Linda and, and everyone involved. So um, it's pretty pretty awesome, pretty badass to win it. At Martinsville, we've been uh, – been struggling at the short tracks and uh, just kept inching up on it and I got a great team and um, they just kept my head in it and it stuck to uh, do a restart there at the end like that but uh, yeah, that's the way it goes. That's what I was going to ask you about two moments in particular. Rudy decides under green flag conditions to bring you down pit road first. That got you the track position and then two laps to go the caution comes out. How did you handle all that? Yeah I mean that was a great call. It didn't get us the, the track position right away but we had a little bit uh, more heat in our tires so uh, it seemed like I fired off a little bit faster than those guys and was able to, to get ahead of them. So we had a great car in the third stage first and third stage and um just want to thank all the 24 fans thanks for sticking with us and uh just uh just super excited i don't really know how to put it in words but i'm a little tired i hit the wall over there so i hit the wall a lot this weekend so i don't know why congratulations william byron wins at martinsville well uh, kyle Larson comes up in the runner up comes home in the runner up position kyle i know you always want to win a race but i gotta imagine with the circumstances today that this is pretty special yeah, no doubt. It's uh, really special, too, to get a 1-2-3 there with uh, William, Chase, and I. So, um, yeah, just a, a great day for Hendrick Motorsports. It's been a great 40 seasons for them. Uh, really cool to have you know, 1,500 people here from Hendrick Motorsports to celebrate. And congrats to William. He did a, he did a really good job. Um, kind of just schooled us all there after that green flag stop. He did a really good job passing all of us. So and then he was able to set a good pace and still get through traffic good. So, um my car felt, felt really good as well. I think we were all kind of the same speed, honestly. So uh, just lost a little bit, of, a little bit of track position there in the second stage, and just was never kind of able to overcome it. But uh, solid day. Congrats to Rick Hendrick, Linda, uh, all of Hendrick Motorsports, everybody who's here at the racetrack as well as you know back at home. So um, just awesome, awesome day. Some racing teammates at the end like that. How nerve wracking is that when you know that you're one, two, three, and you want to try to keep it that way? So yeah, no, it was uh, it was sketchy. I wasn't sure you know, how aggressive you know, they were going to be. I knew William obviously was going to be very aggressive because he was going to win until that caution came out, and uh, you know, they kind or he went in there and, and doored him up a little bit, and um, then yeah, just uh, thankfully though it all kind of shook out, and we were able to get one spot there and still get a top three for HMS. Thanks, Scott. We're going to step over here to Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott, the third place finisher. The other part of this one, two, three today, it looked like you gave it everything you had on that last restart. Just couldn't quite get there. Unfortunately, lost a spot too when it was all said and done. Oh, yeah. Second or third, what's it matter, you know, at that point? But, uh, yeah, you know, obviously, number one, congrats to William and everybody at Hendrick Motorsports, uh, Rick and Linda and, and all the folks, uh, Jeff and Jeff and Chad and, and all the people that uh, – you know, put this together for us, that they have an unbelievable program, and, and I think we're all proud to call it home, and, and uh, it was awesome hosting um, over a 1,000 uh, folks from, from Hendrick today, employees and their families, so uh, glad one of us could get it done. Obviously, wish we could have got it done, you know, selfishly like anybody would, but uh, nice to have a couple solid weeks, and, and to be in contention there for a win is, uh, you know, haven't been in contention to win one in a while, so it was fun to to kind of get to that last restart and, and, and it actually matters so um enjoyed that aspect and, and certainly hunger for more you mentioned being in contention there it seems like this nine team really started to hit their stride knocking on that door to get that win how good does that feel to know that it's coming closer yeah i mean we've, we've the last couple of weeks and and really not just the last couple of weeks but i feel like 
uh, throughout a lot of the season this year. We've just been working in a good direction, working really well together, and, and um, pit stops have been really good. Alan's been calling really good races. I mean, all that stuff has been going um, in, a, in a really positive direction, in my opinion. And um, I think if we can just keep producing that, we'll, we'll get our turn one day. Thanks, Chase. Congrats. 18 years ago, Bill Byron brought his then eight-year-old son to see his first ever NASCAR race at Martinsville. Today, that young man, William Byron, leads a 1-2-3 Hendrick finish in the Cookout 400. Unbelievable. We'll go through the rest of the finishing order here. Two hour, 52 minutes, eight seconds, total time of the race today. 15 laps past the scheduled distance with overtime. That last caution pretty lengthy for the cleanup uh, after that fire from the brakes basically exploding on the 42 of John Hunter Nemechek. Uh, 75.89 mile per hour average race speed today. Five cautions total, three for incidents. Uh, two of them in the final stage and then the two stage breaks today made up those yellows. Uh, William Byron leads the most laps, 88 laps led because of the race going into overtime and leading all those overtime laps. He ended up passing Larson for the most laps led as a result of that. He wouldn't have had a chance mathematically of catching him because he only beat him by one lap. 88 laps led for the 24. The 87 laps led were for Kyle Larson. 84 laps for Joey Logano in the middle going to the race. Chase Elliott led for 64 laps in the final stage. 66 laps led in the beginning of stage two or uh, end of stage two into the beginning of stage three for Denny Hamlin as well. Daniel Suarez led 13 laps during green flag pit stops. Eight laps led for Chase Briscoe during green flag stops. And Austin Sindrick led for six laps during the green flag pit stops as we resulted in eight different drivers leading at least one lap today. Ended up with 13 lead changes in total on top of those eight different leaders. And again, five cautions, overtime finish. Back-to-back -back overtime finishes this season. Only 14 cars finished on the lead lap. We'll go through those finishing results here quickly. In the cookout 400 at Martinsville, William Byron again with the win. Margin of victory at half a second over Kyle Larson in P2. P3 for Chase Elliott. Bubba Wallace ran top five all day, finishing fourth. And Ryan Blaney finishes fifth. Joey Logano sixth. Tyler Reddick seventh. Alex Bowman eighth. Ryan Priest ninth. And Chase Briscoe tenth. And Denny Hamlin, who pitted from fourth with two laps left on a racetrack where we haven't seen any tire wear all day long. Tough to pass. I don't know why they ended up hitting pit road there. That is still mind-boggling to me. He was in fourth. I don't think he had a shot at the win, but he definitely didn't have a shot at a top five anymore once he pitted. I mean, he literally just sacrificed 11 points at least, if not more. He could have gotten to second or third with Elliott losing a spot there on that final restart. Uh, maybe could have slid into third place, but yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't understand that. I'll never understand that. And We've seen that, you know, on late race restarts with overtimes, um, and pit strategy after a long green flag run like that before. And it mind boggles me that time in and time out, you still see that one or two different drivers that do that every single time. It, it never fails. Sometimes it's a leader, sometimes it's somebody else, but I'm surprised that that many people still do that after all these years. Um, and Denny Hamlin was the one to do it here. Uh, behind Hamlin, uh, 12th place, Eric Jones, 13th for Todd Gillen. Ross Chastain, 14th, was the last car to finish on the lead lap. Chris Buescher, first car lap down at 15th. Kyle Busch ends up 16th, 17th for Kirsten Josevar. Martin Truex Jr., 18th. Ty Gibbs, 19th. And Noah Gregson, 20th. Michael McDowell, 21st. Daniel Suarez, 22nd. Austin Sindrick, 23rd. Brad Keselowski, 24th. Josh Berry, 25th. Had a speeding penalty during the final pit stop of the race under green flag. Uh, was running top 10 all day before that. 26th place finish for Kaz Growler. Josh Williams, 27th. Daniel Hemrick, 28th. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 29th. Justin Haley, 30th. Zane Smith, 31st, Corey LaJoy, 32nd, Harrison Burton, 33rd, Austin Dillon, 34th, Christopher Bell, 35th, John Hernemachek, DNF, 36th, and David Starr, DNF, uh, pulled off the track before 100 laps left in this one, finishes 37th. So just the two DNFs total in the race today. Uh, that is the full field finishing order. I will leave that up on the screen for right now. And while that's going on, if we get any other interviews over the next couple of minutes, you guys will get to listen in. I'm going to update the Fantasy League to you guys. Uh, you can join the NASCAR Fantasy League on the NASCAR mobile app or NASCAR.com website. Go to the Fantasy uh, link at the top left-hand corner of the screen on the app or just the top of the screen. You'll see it popping up on NASCAR.com. Chance to win two tickets any NASCAR race if you're choosing the following season if you win our regular season and or playoff championship. As far as that goes, the points reset. So even if you're not in the league, you can't win the regular season because obviously we're eight races in now. 
but you'll get the gist of how it works when the playoffs start. Uh, the points will reset. My fantasy team this week, I had Kyle Larson, Alex Bowman, Martin Trick Jr., Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott. Uh, the only points I lost, out, or I didn't lose out on any points, but that was another reason I was upset with Hamlin doing that because he finished 11th. Now, I had him on my fantasy team. <laughs> it costed me another top 10 finish. He was running fourth. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that, that was part of the reason why it kind of frustrated me a little bit. But uh, needless to say, outside of the fantasy league side of things, I uh, did not have the bonus picks in because I did forgot to set my team. Uh, luckily, the team I had last week was a good pairing for this week, so it didn't cost me too much on the points side of things. Uh, 15th overall, 201, 64 out of first. Monster Jam X10 ends up getting the win this week with 265 points, tying Troy the Great also at 265. So we have co-winners for our cookout 400 at Martinsville. Inside Uranus finishes with 255 points in third. Shrine at 1974 ends up in fourth this week with 248 points. And rounding out the top five and fifth was Kate the Great at 246 points. Coming into the league overall this weekend, um, Monster Jam X10 was the points leader with 1,417 points ahead of Frank T26 with 1,366. Troy the Great was third coming into the week at 1,352. Hercules Harrigan was fourth at 1,325, and Dale 30 had 1,293. That was the top five. Still pretty tight in the points being early in the season yet. I was sixth, 1,291. Uh, going to lose out on probably a couple positions here in points after a tough week for me. That's what I get for not setting my lineup. That's also what I get for Denny Hamlin. And his team decided to pit when they did late in the race. Cost me a couple extra points. But needless to say, got a couple other interviews getting here uh, before we leave. So here is Bubba Wallace, who finished fourth with Jamie Little. The race where we can run. How good was this day for you? Yeah, it was solid. Um, you know, it's it's nice to be able to take some things back that I learned in the car and where we could be better and debrief about it instead of being pissed off, frustrated, you know, at bad luck or, you know, whatever happens, karma. <laughs> um, but definitely learned a lot today, so excited to get back to the shop. Uh, oh, damn, I said shop, didn't I? Hair speed. Um, tomorrow and debrief, and, you know, if we come back tomorrow to race, I think we can be even better. So uh, just hats off to everybody on the 23 car. Uh, this McDonald's Toyota Camry was really, really strong all day. Lost a little bit on that last stop, but never give up on restarts. So it was a good net for us. Um, something to build on, and we'll go to Texas and have some fun. I know Boyer said how impressed he was with you all day long, but you look at your stats, you've been 11th or better the last four races here, and now you get a top five. What have you been doing to make yourself better here? Nah, it's just Clint. He's a brute some respect on my name, that's all. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, earlier today you did say, Jamie, that you talking to Fast forward a little bit, see if there was any other interviews. I did have to pause when I was going through the Fantasy League stuff there for a second, so... Here's Ryan Blaney, who finished fifth. Point on and really seemed to get the car good at the end. Yeah, we got good at the end. Um, yeah, it was an uphill battle for sure. You know, just uh, having to come back down pit road, restart in the back. Nobody could pass anybody. And um, Jonathan made a good call to put two on it. We started the third stage and, and kind of established ourselves a little bit back in the top ten. And then was able to, like, work on our car again. Okay, we had a little clean air. What are your, what's your car doing? How can we get it better? And um, after the green flag stop, I was really fast. Like, I drove – I passed a handful of guys, which I was shocked, and I kind of held on pretty good and um, kind of stalled out when I got to the 11. But, uh, yeah, overall, proud of the fight back from our group. Um, obviously not the first half of the race we wanted. Uh, didn't get any stage points, but um, overall really proud of the fight and perseverance of the advanced auto parts for Mustang uh, 12 team. So we're going to Texas. How, how good is that to know when you come back here in the fall that you guys can have a race like that where things don't go exactly like you want, but you are able to fight back through and still get up and have a great result? Yeah, I mean, I knew it was an uphill battle, um, and really the first round of the race, I wasn't very good. I kind of I kind of lost some spots and was really free, so we tightened up, and then we had to come back down pit road, and then I start last, so now I'm double tight because you're, get, you're tighter in the in the pack, and then we already adjusted. We think if we're going to be for clean air, so it just took us a while to kind of battle back, and um, just proud of, you know, them sticking with it, you know, getting creative, putting two on it with a lot of laps on our lefts and, and having faith that we could kind of hang on, and, and we did, and uh, yeah, just... 12 team does that really well, you know, just fight through times that, that aren't very good. You get set back, you just, just stay in the game. So appreciate uh, all those guys for sticking with it. Thanks, Ryan. And here's Alex Bowman. It brings it home eighth, but the big picture here is Hendrick's big celebration, their 40th anniversary. What does it mean to you to be part of that and to have such a solid day as well? Yeah, for sure. It's super cool to see the, the 24 team get a win. And um, on such a historic day, it means so much to – Mr. and Mrs. H, um, super cool to have these ruby red 
Chevy Camaros on the track and uh, yeah, have so many people here. It's, it's definitely special. Wish we would have had a little better day with our Ally 48. Um, the last two runs, we just struggled a lot. Uh, I, we tightened up all day and then the racetrack got black and finally we got on the other side of it and got too tight. And that last restart, I didn't stand a chance. 14 drove through me all four corners. So um, just uh, tough there to lose a couple spots, but that's short track racing part of it at times. So um, yeah, move, moving on to next week. Hopefully it's good for us, but a, a great day for Hendrick Motorsports. Really great day for Hendrick Motorsports. All right, I'm going to fast forward a little bit more, see if we get any more interviews. I'll jump to live, and we are. So uh, it doesn't look like there was any others in the time that I had paused the live feed. So that is going to be it for us today. The only other thing I have to do is highlight the start times for next weekend. So let me go to the NASCAR app real quick. Um... All right, so we'll pull up the schedule for next weekend. The NASCAR Truck Xfinity and Cup Series all race at Texas Motor Speedway next weekend, so we will have uh, four live streams next week, starting with a Friday night stream for the second consecutive week. The Truck Series live commentary stream will begin at 8.30 Eastern Time. Again, 8.30 Eastern Time Friday night will be the NASCAR Truck Series uh, race then Saturday morning. So we've got a late night Friday, wake up early Saturday morning. We've got Cup Series action for you guys. Cup Series practice qualifying at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. That'll be 9.30 local time in the Texas-Fort Worth area. Uh, Xfinity Series race coverage next weekend will be right after that practice qualifying stream at 1.30 Eastern time Saturday afternoon. And our Cup Series coverage next Sunday will begin at 3 p.m. Eastern. So again, Truck Series Friday night at 8.30 uh, and then a doubleheader on Saturday with cup practice and qualifying beginning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 1.30 p.m. Eastern for the Xfinity Series race, and then Sunday afternoon with our main event for the Cup Series. Uh, that will be at 3 p.m. Eastern with our pre-race coverage. Uh, all three races are on Fox Sports 1 for the Truck Xfinity and Cup Series, and as far as cup practice and qualifying, that should be on Fox Sports 1 as well. It was on FS2 this week, but that's because it was in the evening. Baseball was on. With it being in the morning, it should be on FS1 again. So uh, that is next weekend's schedule. Appreciate everybody tuning in here today. I believe we did hit our goal for likes on the stream uh, I think I noticed that right before the end of the race on that overtime restart. 161 likes. Our goal was 150. So appreciate everybody for allowing me to get to the goal of 150 likes today. I do have to refresh uh, how many subscribers we have. We are just nine subscribers away from 5,000. We didn't quite get there. We, we chipped away at it. I think coming into the stream, I had uh, a little over 40 to go. Um what was it, like 47 or something like that um, coming? Or no, it was like 29, I think, coming into this stream. It was over 50 before the weekend started Friday night. So appreciate that. We chipped away at it quite a bit this weekend. But nine to go. Tell your friends, tell your family to hit that subscribe button if they are NASCAR fans. This is the place to be every NASCAR race weekend for live commentary action. And back to mid uh, midweek streams once we get further along the season. I can promise you that as well. Thanks, everybody. Have a good rest of your Sunday evening, Sunday night. Enjoy WrestleMania. Actually, before I go off the air real quick, give me one second. Oh. For any wrestling fans out there today, Roman Reigns is putting this title on the line later tonight. This isn't the actual Universal Championship. This is like from 2014. But uh, needless to say, this title is going to be on the line. Acknowledge your Tribal Chief. I am not the Tribal Chief, but I'm your Chief here today. Subscribe for 5,000 uh, and enjoy WrestleMania for any other wrestling fans out there as well. Uh, appreciate the support. Uh, again, as always, I'll see you back better than ever next weekend. As I defend my uh, my uh, my championship from two years ago in the playoffs on uh, um, the fantasy league, uh, that I didn't buy this title as a result of that, but I I was just trying to think of like the last thing that I had won that would be closest to a championship would be that I did win a fantasy football league championship within the last few years too. It might have even been the same year, honestly. Now that I think about it, but uh, and needless to say, that's in the past. Uh, appreciate it, everybody. Have a good rest of your night, and I'll see you next Friday. 
for some truck series racing at Texas.